Hi, morning. Without, uh, without further much ado, I think I will start the webinar. We have quite a, quite a lot of participants today joining our webinar series uh, this morning. Okay, before I start, all right, I just wanted to share with you what is all this webinar about. Okay, it's actually about the upgrading uh, from Annex 12 until 19 series. Okay, so for some of you, I've, I've known some of you, you are still using, some of you are still using Annex 7.5. Some of you are still using Annex 8. Okay, some are even Annex 5. All right, so a lot of uh, my customers who always uh, meet up with me, they will ask me, hey, Julie, now, now uh, what, what is the version right now? You know? So in fact, Siemens, they are no longer continuing from Annex 12 to Annex 30. No, they actually changed the naming to series number. So uh, it started from 18 series. 18 series, I think the first version was 1826, right? 26, yeah, I think I think that. Okay, and then and then after that it actually progressed to 19 series. Okay, and then the latest version is actually NX2007. Okay, so um why four series? There's a reason behind them because they in one year there will be two major update, that's mean two major version upgrade, and in between this version upgrade, there will be patches. So that is why, um, you know, within a series like 19 series, there's at least around eight to nine of the different uh, series version. So if let's say you want to check with your customers, you know, what is the versions that they are using? Usually they will tell you um, either is it in 18 series or 19 series or 20 series. So if you talk about um, uh, most of the most corporate company right now, they are actually using 19 series. Most of them are using 19 series. Yeah, so this this is what uh uh what what is the the series about lah? So there is no NX 13, 14, 15, uh, yeah, just to just to uh uh share with you, so that you're aware about it. All right. So the latest version of NX is NX two zero zero seven. Okay, which is just launched uh other early this year. Okay, I think around February. Yeah. All right, and then um this sessions right is very much to. Uh, for those um, NX user, okay. So if let's say you are new to NX or new to you know this software, um, it, it is actually not not really suitable because it's actually an upgrade uh, uh, sharing system. So for those people who who are you know using uh, NX for many years already, you know these sessions actually suit you because we are going to share with you what's new in, in uh, NX 19 series la, from NX 12. Okay, so before I started, I also seen a lot of new, um, you know, company that actually sign up for this webinar, which, you know, thanks for coming. Okay, so before I start, before I get uh, my trainer to start, probably I share a little bit about Dream Technology, who we are, okay, while people continue coming in. Okay, so um, yeah, next. Uh, Okay, so this is the agenda of today. So we will talk about, about DTS. Okay, I'll be sharing. My name is Julie once again. Okay, then after that, we will go into what's new on NX Cat. Okay, which will be shared by Chow. Chow, can you uh, show yourself your video? Uh, let me just introduce you. Yeah, this yeah. is Chow. Hello. Cannot see your face Hello. properly. Ah, yeah. So Chow, Chow is um, Chow Chi uh, You know, people call him Chi Chong. So yeah. he's he's um our senior application engineer in Dream Technology who has been using the who who has been with us for since day one. All right. So he has um you know about maybe fifteen years of about fifteen years of experience in uh in the in in this uh, application in using the software application. So uh so then after that we have Edwin. Okay, which is he will be sharing camp in the afternoon. Edwin, are you there? Yeah, so this is Edwin. Yeah. So um so Edwin will be uh sharing with you what's new in camp. Okay, so he is also in this industry for many, many years. Okay, so also I think more than 15 years. Yeah. All right, so that is why he will be sharing on the camp portions after the uh after the lunch break. So, uh, so they will continue sharing. The, so the Q and A will be where you ask questions. 
So if let's say you see your left side um, of your screen, right, there's a Q&A, you can actually key in your questions over there. And then we have our administrator behind to uh, collect, to consolidate all these questions. So the trainer will actually answer, answer the questions, all right? And then after that, in between, if let's say you have anything, you know, that very urgent that you want to ask, you can raise hand. Okay, there's a raise hand button down there as well. All right, so uh, we, we, will, we will actually pay attention to you. Okay, and then there'll be a break from 12 to 2 p.m. Okay, so from 12 to 2 p.m., then after that, go back, join back the same link to continue with the camp. All right, okay, so very quickly, we uh, share, I share a little bit with you about DTS. Okay, so before we start, I think, uh, okay, so questions, uh, is there anything here? I think there'll be some poll questions that, you know, the marketing would like to um, uh, get from you. So, uh, yeah. So, do you see any pop-up of the questions from your screen? Can you actually help us to reply the questions? Yes, yes. Just give them one minute or 30 yeah. seconds to answer. Okay, this. 30 seconds. All right. Yeah, I already, I already see a lot of people. Is answering okay, that's already. very good. This is something that, you know, to help us to improve in our future webinar. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, I think can start. Uh Oski, I think there's somebody raised hand, right? Mr. Hung. Uh yeah, okay. Uh okay, so we can start already. All right. Okay, next. Okay, about DTS. So you, a lot of you may know who we are. In fact, we are a uh, Siemens smart partner in, uh, I mean, uh, PLM solutions provider, and we are the certified uh, certified Siemens smart partner in Singapore and Malaysia. So we provide end-to-end -end digital solutions. Okay, so um, I always share with my customer what is the differentiator between us and other competitor. Our company is very much an engineering solutions company. So we not only resell software, we actually provide solutions, software solutions and services as well. So we actually work, uh, you work with uh, customers on project basis. All right. So things like reverse engineering, digital twin, you know, uh, post processor customizations, all those are actually the solutions, services that DTS can provide to our customer. So that is why we work with a lot of partners in the industry. So all these partners are recognized partners, you know, where we actually complement their solutions to help our customers to be competitive in the region. All right. So from end to end, and uh, design all the way until uh, manufacturing, we are involved in every sections. So this is our mission. Number one, PLM digitalization solutions partner in ASEAN to uplift the competencies and competitiveness you know, of, the, uh, of our customers to compete in the global level. So this always has been our mission since day one, okay, until now, all right. Okay, so we have offices in Malaysia and Singapore. So for myself, I'm actually based in uh, Singapore. Chow and uh, Edwin, they are actually our regional uh, engineers currently based in KL. Okay, so we have an office in Johor and we have another office in Penang. So every of our territory, we have our own dedicated technical guys and also salespeople to manage and to, uh, to support our customers. All right. So our team of engineers, right, we have many, year, many years of experience, you know, in this PLM. So they are all very senior engineers and then they are also end user of the software solutions. So that is why we, because of our experience is actually given us a, a better positions to support our customer to deliver the solutions, you know, uh, with our knowledge and experience. 
So these are some of the services and solutions that we can provide. Like I mentioned, professional services and consultancy, engineering services can be on-site or off-site engineering support, and also training. Okay, in fact, we are one of our, our key deliverable to our customers is our training. So be in Malaysia or Singapore, right? We actually, uh, our training, our training um, contents or even training deliverable are actually recognized. Okay. So uh, these are some of the upcoming events that we have. So we will be joining Metal Tech exhibitions Okay, in Malaysia from 25th to uh, 22nd to 25th of June in NITEC. So if let's say anybody is coming to Malaysia during this week, do come to Metal Tech. So we will, we will have a booth over there. All right. And, and then uh, we will have sharing sessions as well uh, at every dedicated time slots. Okay, which uh, the marketing will actually share the schedule with you when nearer to the date. So if let's say you happen to be there, okay, do come to our sharing sessions as well. Okay, then besides that in Singapore, we have one physical event going on. Okay, this physical event will be um, held in um, uh, in in uh, one North, okay, at 10.30 to 2 p.m. Okay, so we will cover, you know, automating part manufacturing with uh, tomorrow's camp. So who should attend this, this event? Okay, the owner of the company, okay, or the company that doing part manufacturing. So this is also another event uh, that we will be uh, doing this coming 7th of June, which is two weeks from now. So if let's say you are keen, you know, on this, some of this event, feel free to drop us an email. Okay, then we will send you more details. Okay, so I think that's all from my sharing. Yeah, short and sweet. So I'll pass the time to Chow. I think this, this one is the key sharing today. So Chow, please take over. Yes, hello. Okay, so uh, thanks Julie for the introductions. Okay, from my errands, uh, let me review myself uh, before I start my topics. Uh. Okay, so my name is Chow Yi Chow and you can call me Chow. So I work in uh, Twin Direct System as an application engineer about uh, 15 years ago. And I mainly focus on NX CAT, okay, NX CAT portions, and also preform surface modelings. Okay, uh, I also involved in uh, uh, 3D scanning, inspections, and also the uh, part reverse engines. Okay, so uh, today in this session here, I will show you some important NX update from NX 12 to uh, NX 19 series for CAT portions. Okay, I hear that uh, some of you is uh, still using NX uh, 10.5 or NX 8, right? But never mind, I, I will show, uh, show you some, a little bit on the updates based on the NX, uh, from NX 7.5 and uh, NX 8. Okay, so uh, this CAT uh, sessions here is roughly take about uh, two hours plus minus. Uh, okay, so after that, we have another 30 minutes for QA sections. Okay, so if you have any question during my sections, uh, okay, you may uh, go through the web chat there. Okay, maybe I'll share with you. Okay, so uh, just now. Julia mentions, okay, you can type your question here at the QA section here. Okay, you can type your question here. So uh, I can uh, I will try to answer your question during my sections. Okay, if I cannot answer, so I, uh, I will answer during the QA sections. Okay, and also uh, to increase the screen screen uh, sharing quality, that I will close my webcam here. Okay, to reduce the bandwidth here. Close it. Huh? Okay. Yeah, okay. So let's go for the contents that we show today. Okay, so this is the content I show today. Okay, first is the uh, interface. I show the um, interface change in the NX uh, Magic series. And also, next, I will uh, show you the sketch uh, modeling, preform, and assembly portions of the updates. Okay, means that what's the news functions, news updates for these four portions here. And then after that, uh, I will show you the data exchange and library. Okay, the data exchange and library here, the main focus here is the 3D PDF. Previously, NX, they are not able to export uh, the 3D PDF, but in current version, 96 versions, right? They are able to export the 3D PDF as I uh, showed in this picture here. Okay, so later on, I will show you an example of a video on how to export the 3D with the PMI. Okay, to the uh, 3D PM. Okay, so this is the data exchange. And next to here uh, is a structure frame. Okay, this is actually a new module in NX, which allows you to create those structure frame 
uh, easily with the template installed inside the animal. As I showed in the, uh, this picture here, as you can see, this structure frame. Uh, previously, if you want to design this structure frame in the MSRI, you need to like, draw it manually. And especially on the joining area, the joining area that you need to uh, cut it according to your specs. Okay, but with this new module, the structure frame here, they actually have the template to allow you to select which uh, bar or roads, okay, what, what the structure you mean to uh, build in. And then automatically, uh, the system helps you to cut off the joining area. Okay, so this one also will show you through the uh, videos. Okay. And next, uh, I'll show you about uh, additive manufacturing inside the MX, which uh, shown in this picture here. They uh, <coughs> allow you to create those lattice structures. Okay, so then you can see here the lattice structure here. Uh, how do you create a lattice structure? And then we have one more thing in MX here, which is called uh, convergent modeling. Maybe some of you already know this one, uh, but I will really, uh, show you show you a little bit on convergent modeling portions on how we edit the STL file directly from the cat uh, commands okay because uh previously if you uh, for other cat cat system if you want to edit stl file um the you you need to uh, need to go through like for some of the export to another uh, another system or another software to do it but in nx right you can do it in nx by using like uh, for example you want to cut a hole you want to uh, they want some of the portions here, you can use the normal cat tool to do it, to edit as they are okay? So this one I will show you in, in this portion here. Then after the drafting, yeah, I will give you some update on the drafting. And the new thing here is the VR, okay? VR, so we can use a VR device together with the NX here to check uh, your parts uh, live now, instead of uh, one-to-ones, okay? One-to-ones uh, checkings, okay? So this is a, the other portions I will show you to video also. And lastly, a book for the case study. Okay, some of the, our uh, customer success review. Okay, okay. So this is the content that I will show you. Okay, let's go to the first topic here. Uh, interface. So uh, okay. So the NX interface has changed a lot. Okay, from NX twelve to NX ninety series. Okay, the change not only for the main theme color but also for the command button design. Okay, so for example, here you can see from the NX job, uh, pre-NX job, they have this kind of uh, icon design. And in 90 series here, they, uh, they open all the icons into this new uh, inter interface. Okay, so from here, you can see the asterisk in code to here, and this uh, whole, this uh, change to this icon. Already. Okay, so this one uh, is the icon experience they have changed. Okay. And uh, another main update in NX here where the show and hide features, okay, are uh, allowed to change the behavior in customer default. Okay, so for example, in period evolution of NX, uh, the checkbox next to the command or the features history in it, uh, for, the, for the feature in the history, we are used to control the suppress and unsuppress. Okay, if you asked before, you know that you know that if you click this button, this checkbox, okay, they actually suppress uh, or unsuppress the particular features. But in latest version and next nine series, they, they change the way uh, to uh, for this kind of button. For example, uh, this one, this icon here, if you click on it, it becomes show and hide. Okay, so uh, this one is telling with your assembly. Well, if you use the uh, NX assembly before, right? If you check the checkbox next to the components, actually it's show and hide. Okay, actually uh, NX they actually try to tell you with the assembly mode. Okay, you can show and hide certain object or features in the history. Okay, so this one actually is uh, uh, optional. Okay, this is by when you install pre install the NX. They use these buttons like, uh, as a short and hide. Okay, but if you don't deliver with this one, it always can change it to the customer default. Okay, at the customer default, you can change it for the feature checkbox action. Actually, you can uh, change it to suppress or unsuppress it or, or hide. Sorry, or hide. So, actually, it uh, improves, especially for users who can use short and hide, okay, instead of suppress or unsuppress. So, this is optional so based on your, your, your preference. Okay, so it consistent be between the part negative and the negative actions. Okay. So this is it. 
So um, uh, let me show you a little bit on the demo okay, for the interface here. I can okay, let me uh, change my screen to this uh, annex. Okay, so uh, under here, okay, if you're using uh, free annex, uh, annex trial, right, uh, or annex 7.5, right, right? Okay, so the interface here actually changed a lot. Okay, so uh, the team color puts a team color. And then uh, at the welcome page here, they have this kind of uh, uh, highlight, which uh, gives you a rough idea on what's news for current machines. Okay, if you click on this one, you can see, uh, see these videos. Okay, go to this video and uh, what is the uh, update and so on. Okay, yeah, so this is the interface here. And let me open a pass. Okay, so this is example part. I try to open up. Okay, so um, okay, so for the icon here, as you can see, okay, let me zoom in this portion. So, okay, the icon here already changed to new design. Okay, and next to here, the part navigator. Okay, so part navigator. Okay, from here you can see the the chat box already changed to uh, the eyes. Okay, eyes close eyes. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, short and high. Okay, for example here, for data number three, currently here is high. So if I want to unhide this data number three, I just click this button one time. Okay, and then this one you show. So the, the item I want to show up is under here. Okay, so this is data number three. Okay, so this is the first thing. And maybe you ask, uh, how do I suppress certain features while using these options? Okay, so if you want to suppress suppress the the, the features here, okay, you just uh, need to right click. You still can suppress this. You just need to right click and select those like uh, this command suppress it. I think the suppress button is still here. Okay, you just need to right click and then suppress it. Okay, right, for some of the suppress, yes, yeah, this how we suppress it. Okay, and then I can start and suppress it. Okay, so this one, uh, this is actually when you install pre and annex, right? The setting here is set you are using this, this method. If you are doing this, you want to go back to the normal uh, condition whereby you press this button here to suppress and suppress, right? You can always go to this uh, customer default, which we are under menu, file, uh, utility, customer default. Okay, at this portion here, you can always change to, uh, sorry, I just go to this gateway. And change to partner together here. Yeah, this is the location that we uh, can change. Feature checkbox action currently is really high. Okay, so if you want to change it to suppress, yep, you can always change to suppress. Go back to the uh, annex uh, trust method. Okay, so this is optional. Okay, you can always change back to the old method. Okay, so this is the things I need to share with you. And then, okay, next. Uh, the new thing here in interface here actually uh, is they got this new what do the coordinate view. Okay, this coordinate view they replace the F8 buttons. Okay, for example, how do I say that? Okay, for example, here if I want to see the top view, okay, normally uh, you need to press the F8 buttons. Okay, shortcut key to snap the view to the top. Okay, but in this current uh, new annex here, uh, we can select this box here. Okay, for example, I want to see the top portions. Okay, select the top box and then change it to this top view. Okay, if I want to see the sub view, okay, bottom view, and so on, you can always change from this uh, what called coordinate view box here. Okay, so this is new things uh, for this uh, new menu editor. And next here, a uh, quick pick. Okay, quick pick here. Okay, for example, normally. Uh, in NX12, right, uh, or pre-NX, that actually, if you want to use a quick pick from, okay, you want to pick uh, a certain features of surface here, right, you want to wait for three dot, okay, wait for a while, and then select it. And when you select it, that actually, the, the list of the quick pick is shown under here. Sometimes, right, you block your view or selections, okay, 3000, okay, you need to re remove the, the quick pick to another location and so on. But in this new annex and uh, analysis series, right, they actually uh, snap the quick pick at the top right portions. Okay, the top right portions. So with this right, actually, you not block your view. 
Okay, maybe select. Okay, so when you select one, select you can select from here and choose your from the list what you want to select. Okay, so this is one of the update for the quick bit. Okay, it no longer uh placed in these locations by default. Okay, you fix it on one position. Okay, so in for this quick pick, right? Actually, you can change location. For example, uh, when you insert the next, uh, the location for the quick pick is the top right portion. Okay, but if if we do not import this location, actually you can move it to like any location. Like for example, I want to move here. I want to move here. Okay, I want to move here. Okay, so at any time, right? You when you select and you pull oh, up, sorry, you can change at these locations that you predefined. Okay. So this is the last location you, you, you save it. Okay, you, you put it in this location. So every time you show that here. Okay, so this one you they have the uh the locations memories okay to let you choose. Okay, so if I place here next time I choose from the quick pick from this side, yes, this switch to it. Yeah, so this is very handy, this is a very good function update for NX9 series. Okay. Okay, so this is a quick pick. And uh, another thing I want to show here is the selection tools. Um, for, for the user that uh, still using NX uh, 7.5 NX Extra, um, in all NX Extra, actually they're actually using this what we call the selection filter here that they will show all the selection filter in one list. Okay, no, no matter how the parts are. So in this NX uh, 9 series, they actually filter up this section filter here based on the object that are available in the 3D. Okay, so for example here, you, you cannot see anything like the uh, uh, face up, okay, face up, okay, face up means that SDL's uh, filter, right? It, it, it doesn't show here because this object, this 3D doesn't have this object, so you won't show up here. So you, from here, you will need to select a long list, okay, you select a long list, to uh, to find out your list, your, your filter. So they actually uh, minimize this filter so that uh, you can really fast to select the body type you that you want to select. Okay, so this is actually a filter. Okay, so another thing here is that um, fit. Okay, fit buttons in, in NX here by, by default is a control F or, or, or you can use this shortcut fit. And you have a, in this new SHA, they implement a new shortcut here whereby you can start to click an empty area, empty screen here. Just start to click. Yeah, just start to click. Then, then you automatically fit the part to the center. Like, for example, if I actually move this part to my locations, okay, out of my screen, I want to fit, just double click at this screen here, start to click. Yeah, automatically you fit. Okay, so this is the uh, another shortcut. That you get in this nice series. And uh, next thing here is that um, these selections, uh, these selections, they also have improvement. Okay, for example, here, I want to uh, use this asterisk. I think this asterisk command here, I want to asterisk certain portion, like for example, uh, I try to pick, um, yeah, I can try to pick this portion here. Okay, I select this page. Okay, the field page. Okay, I try to select. And then after that, I, I see that uh, I bring that poker. Uh, the selection here, I, I select wrongly. I select the long edge. Right? Okay, I want to deselect all the edge, all the selections I select. Okay, how do I deselect in peers and that's right, is that uh, shift, okay, shift and deselect and select that to deselect. Okay, but this one takes sometimes if you take a, take a lot of features or the object here. Okay, and another way here is that reset buttons. Okay, reset buttons. Okay, so everything is reset, and then you need to reset again uh, the parameters uh, that you key in. Okay, so this is another way like, in pre NX. Okay, but in this the latest NX version side, they actually they limit one shortcut to let you deselect all items in this what I call uh, in these selections. Let's say object. Right? Okay, you just click. One click buttons at the empty area. Click one times. Okay, for someone here, I just click one time. Okay, so all the selections that I make, they actually deselected. Okay, while maintaining the, the default setting, the value that I keep.
trigger. Yeah, so this is the one uh, means of the CPU is an exterior for the these selections. Okay, so for example, uh, I got to try to pick again. Uh, okay, I'm to pick some item. I want to deselect all the object here. Okay, object select. I just click here one time. Click. Yeah, to deselect. Okay, so this is the these selections that we have here in this many series. Okay, let me show you another last thing here is that okay. So uh at the bottom here, okay, for example, if you want to view like if you open the part, sometimes right, uh if you zoom in certain area for the edge, right? Like, uh from here you can see it actually is a round, okay, it's a circle, the full circles edge. But if you zoom in, you can see this kind of I call the uh the resolution is not so good. Okay, so this one is the uh, uh, set by default in NX, whereby it depends on your graphics. Uh, you, 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 you use your graphic usage. Okay, so they, they use this kind of the uh, lightweight view, okay, lightweight view. So if, if you want to change this one, right, uh, under here, they have a new option here to let you change. Okay, you can go for menu, preference here. You can go for visualization, visualizations. So under here, right, people that like uh, for this accuracy here, this performance, they they change it. Uh, you, you just adjust the value without without knowing what how what it just. But in in this screen here, actually they have this new uh, I call this uh preview. I can say preview to let you check. So you zoom in and check the check. Okay, the the setting that that you you, you change right here, increase. Okay, what the changes for this edge? If I change it to the latest one, uh, yes, the lowest one, yeah. So this is how the edge look like. Okay, so I can change to the accurate. So this is much more much more smoother. Okay, so to provide this kind of new view. So under here you can after that you change this accurately and then you click apply, okay. and then you change it okay, to a much more precision stuff. So this is the another new things in the interface. So I think this uh all for this interface. Okay, so I think I need, need to go to the next one. Okay, if you have any question, you can type in okay uh, at the Q and A section here and I try to answer you. Okay, so uh, the any interface is done. Okay, next I go for the sketch. Okay, sketch here uh, in the later version of NX actually similarly implement a new sketch engine. It's called a uh, sketch solver. Okay, so the new sketch solver actually allow you to automatically okay, find the relationship between the curve. Okay, so in, in, in the way that they actually reduce your mouse click uh, selections, okay, because if you have the relationship so automatically you find the uh, relationship. Uh, and next thing here, uh, the relationship finding can be fine tuned by user. Okay, where user can define the, the relationship need to keep when you move or drag a certain curve. Okay, this one I'll show you later. I will show you in the live demo. And next thing here is the move uh, overflow for creating and editing dimensions. Okay, we don't need to select the dim uh, dimension commands. Uh, you 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 can apply or create dimensions directly by just selecting the curve. Okay, so this one I will uh, show you the demo on this one. So this is the basic interactions. Uh, uh, most interaction in, in, in this sketch is done through graphic window with little bit of it uh, for the toolbar or ribbon bar user. Okay, so for example here, if, if you want to create these dimensions, previously in create you need to select, select the command called, called the rapid dimension. So you select rapid dimension and select this I call uh, this curve and select this curve and then click apply. Okay, for, but in this current version, you don't need to just select the curve diary, select this curve and select this line here, diary the dimension and come up. And then you just select the dimension and then to change it to value to value one. Okay, either I'll show you this one. And then curve modifications here, it, when you drag, when you drag a curve here, actually they have the option to let you have the linear or rotational uh, movement. Okay, so for example, this one, if you drag it, uh, you, you can move this uh, linearly or vertically, uh, so rotationally. Okay, so this is a new thing here. And new thing here is that uh, we have this uh, uh, 
shake and break. Okay, so this is shake and break is a new uh, movement. I can, I can say it's a new gesture in NX. It will allow you to break all the constraints in the, in the sketch. Okay, very easy. For someone, if you have a lot of the sketch or a lot of uh, constraints inside, you want to remove all right. Okay, you just uh, select the curve and then shake it, and then you will remove all the constraints that you selected. Okay, so this one I will actually show you. Okay, let's go for directly for the demo here. I will just show you. So for this part, I just uh, I just will see. I try to create a new here. Okay, a new file and create a new sketch. Okay, so for this new sketch here, uh, let me show you a little bit on this one. Okay, for so this one, as usual, you pick a rhythm plane and start a sketch. So from here, if you notice that uh, if you use the NX trap, okay, you notice that the interface here they change. Like for example, uh, the interface not only change at the data core this system. Okay, so for the data core system, PLC they show you the X Y Z in, in the very small data here. But in this new new sketch for here, they actually have this point called unlimited axis. Means that uh, unlimited axis here. Okay, X and Y. Okay, X and Y as is here. Okay, so this is a new thing here. And another new thing here is that uh, the command here that actually they reduce, reduce a lot of the, uh, the command. Okay, the command here. And also, okay, what maybe you ask what is useful for, for this unlimited uh, as is here? Okay, okay, let me show you. Uh, for example, in, in periods of uh, NX, right, um, if you draw, you try to draw. Uh, a sketch out from a uh, very far away from this data right for example here it is also good and you have on the dimensions this one with respective to the datum okay what you need to do here is that you need to select a what we call the uh every dimension select the center point here and then after that you need to go back to the datum here to select the axis okay but in this new right, new uh new annex here, there's new sketch for bigger in the name because since that this one is unlimited, any file away, right? You can just directly, like for example, here I select this center point and select this axis diary, and then come out the dimensions. Okay, so very fast. Okay, you don't no need to go back to the center and then select the axis again, and then yeah. So so this is the uh, the use one of the shape for this unlimited system. Okay, so this is the first thing I already show you. And then next thing here uh, I want to show you is the uh, closed loop versions. Okay, so let me create a rectangle here. Okay, draw a rectangle from this center point. Okay, to here. Okay, so from here is not if you notice that okay when you create a closed loop, okay a closed loop. Sketch. Uh, at the middle of the section here, they actually have a shaded blue color, uh, shaded regions. So this one here indicate that this is a closed loop. Okay, what, why, 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 why this one uh, is implemented? Okay, because sometimes right, uh, if you draw some sketch, we actually need to have a closed loop, but you don't know uh, whether the the sketch is closed or not. Okay, for example, I try to delete this one. I try to delete this this sketch here. Okay, when I, when I delete, as you can see, this is not closed loop, and ultimately the shaded regions is uh, gone. Okay, so right now I try to, okay, as, a, uh, as an engineer, I try to draw line to close it, but actually I did not close it, I just stopped at here. Okay, so I stop here. So in pre and next right, uh, uh, next chart, right, you don't know whether this one is closed or not. You don't know because uh, well, from what I see, it's okay. But if I zoom in, they have a closed loop. It's, it's a breaking line here. So here, uh, this option here, if you if you close it, uh, sorry, I have to close it here. Okay, I close it here. Okay. So with this option line, right, actually the the uh, the system can show you this is a closer so that you can use it for astro and other applications. Yeah. 
So this is the uh, leading of animals. And next thing here is that uh, soil mover. Okay, soil mover here is, is uh, okay, from this, this color here, you can see uh, this color, this color orange, uh, a little bit of orange color, means that this one is not fully defined or not fully really constrained. Okay, so this is what I mean that we, uh, what I call the soil mover. Okay, so if I create some dimension here, right, for example, like, uh, okay, the scale is partially defined and bottom. They said it's not pre -conscious. Okay, so right now I try to create some um, dimensions. Okay, the dimension creation here, um, you actually uh, no need to create um, the every dimensions at the top. Okay, you no need to select any of the dimension. You just need to, like, for example, select the curve here, directly the cover dimensions. Okay, so this is very, very fast. Okay, so for this case here, I just select this curve and then I just double click this one to fit in the dimension I want. Okay. So that's it. So same as here, I just select it. Okay, so I just select this one to be in the dimension now. Okay. So this is the, the things. Okay. So we call it a single plan for the dimension is one. So, okay, for a moment, I think this point is not. Yeah, okay, just start the sketching of script. Okay, so from here, uh, once we have fully defined this, the sketch curve, like, from here, you guys can see uh, the, the sketch fully defined, and then uh, under the stroke over here, you can see any like this line is in this orange color. Or, this one is actually black color. Okay, so this one, uh, you can see, is no degree of freedom. So you move the part, you cannot move it. Okay, so this is a pre defined sketch. Okay, so next thing here. Okay, for example here, uh, you may be asked, okay, where where do you create those constraints? Okay, constraints. How we create a constraint in this new energy uh, solve here? You can uh, the constraint store under this top portions. This top portions. Here. Okay, so if you want to, for example, draw a line, horizontal line, and uh, I want to constrain it to, for example, this one, I will align with this horizontal line here, collinear. Okay, how do I, I, I create this constraint? Is that I just select this one, this line I created, and I select this line, and then after that, I just apply this uh, collinear. Okay, that's it. Okay, very simple. Okay. So another thing here, if I draw a circle, okay, if I draw a circle, if I want to tangent this one, this one, it's like this two, and then then, <coughs> okay, that's it. Okay, very simple. And then maybe you ask, uh, where is the constraint? Because previously in entry and I said, the all the constraint icons or constraint icon will show up at the here. Okay, so they actually hide it. Okay. So they actually hide it because sometimes uh, if you your sketch you have many sketch very complex sketch together with the constraint icons uh, you will very messy. So that's why they they hide it in behind. For example, you want to call out those constraints uh, to view those constraints. Uh, what I need to do here is that for example, I, I select this this curve or uh, this line. Then then only they will show up those constraints that related to the sketch you select. Yeah. This one is short, this one is short, yeah. So this one is short, and okay, then only a short. So if for example, if I select this line or this curve here, then it only show this one and this one because uh, what you select, the, uh, they only show the constraint based on those constraints that are related to your sketch, okay? Then you show those, those constraints that are related to your sketch, okay? So this is how you look like. Yeah, they show here this is the constraint, and then you select this one, this is the constraint for this one, and then you select this one, this constraint for the <coughs> engine, and so on. Yeah, so this is the constraint. I will show you the constraint. Okay, so okay, so uh, maybe ask how you remove the constraint. Okay, for example, here I want to remove a constraint for this my god, this collinear, this collinear. Okay, previously you just delete from the screen. But right now, right, uh, very easy. Um, you don't need to use any mouse 
uh, any key port we delete the uh, delete button should be delete uh, constraint. What I need to do here is that it's a select. Okay, as as you can see, this constraint, this constraint here, this is a collinear constraint. So I just select this collinear constraint one time, collinear constraint one time, make it become a, a pink color. Okay, this one become a pink color. Once become a pink color, I can drag this one out, and then automatically this one the constraint will be deleted, removed. Okay, same as here. For example, uh, for this tangent, I, I want to remove this tangent. I select this one. This curve here, take this constraint one time and try to move up. Okay, so from here, actually, you, cannot, you can see any, any right click button or mouse uh, or keyboard uh, functions here to delete the object. All is based on the mouse click, uh, ray handy. Just select and then remove it. So this is way to remove it. Uh, the, the constraints okay. so, okay. and next thing here i want to show is that uh, for example here uh, uh, if you create a dimension here with 90 degree in 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 pure energy they show you all constraint because this is 90 degree and so on okay you show you 90 you show all constraint so instead here they actually they also show you all constraint you, you, you create this dimension right you show you this one they actually all constraint uh, with the constraint here this is highlighted in in what I call the uh, pink color so this is all constraint type but if you accept this binary value right they actually they, they didn't show up they actually actually try to remove the constraint to adapt with the new change here. Okay, so in this station, actually, no need to uh, personally delete those uh, old constraints. Uh, like, for example, if you design all the main things, right, after, after that, you create those uh, that one dimension, and some you create, you create one dimension, you make a whole sketch become a whole constraint. You very messy, you need to find out where is the old constraints uh, portion and delete it manually. But in this later NX, uh, Sketch for over here, uh, no need. You just uh, always adapt to your final constraint that you uh, try to create. Okay, so the other constraint that is they try to maintain or delete of the building for the over constraint. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, a uh, very, very good uh, constraint one here. Okay, and then here, for example, if I try to change that, uh, if I try to change this uh, 90 degree to uh, 80 degrees uh, of this one. So from here, as you can see, uh, uh, this one constraint is still there. But if I change it to uh, 80, normally the previous this one you, you will not go physical, you not go, and this one will show in, in what I call the old constraint. Okay. So but in, in this new like right here, it's just key at 80. Automatically, they help you delete. They help you actually help you remove this constraint uh, to adapt with your change. Okay, so this is uh, 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 okay. I can say you have got a bad or, or, or good. Stuff. Okay, for well, well, good ones, if you want to, like, uh, for example, you want to uh, very fast to, to change the dimension without being to um, delete all this constraint binary, like, uh, yeah, this is very, very good. The system has to have to delete and adapt to the new change. Okay, so this is how we how this uh, NS solver here. Okay, so uh, maybe I, I okay. Another thing here is that, uh, for example, I would not, if I change to 80, but I don't want to move this line. I don't want to move this line. But instead, I want to move this line. I want to maintain this one uh, vertically. Okay, how will I how will do this one? So I let me do one time here. Okay, so under here, like, for example, I try to change it to 80. By default, uh, the system will show you they will delete this one, this portion. They will delete this portion. This portion. Show in the pink color, you can see the pink color. They delete this portion if you accept this value. Okay, if you don't want that, actually you can select this one. You select this one. I want to delete this one. Then automatically this one become pink color, then this one become a blue color. Means means that they maintain this one, they change the constraint, they want to delete this, this portion automatically. So while using this one, right? Actually, uh, you key okay, then the move here. Instead of putting this by default, okay. So this uh, uh, new sketch over here actually give you more freedom to let you choose which line you want to move, which constraint you want to keep uh, really handy. 
You don't need to go through a really deep but uh, go to the variation browser and check where is the variation shape and so on to, to, to remove those commands. Okay. Yeah, so this is the new swap version. Yeah, so this one actually uh, you you can turn on the off. For example, if you're not uh, familiar with this one, you want to use you still want to, you want to use back the old methods and old sketch method, you can still can change it back. So under here, you, how you change it is that uh, under file menus or uh, customer utility feature toggle. So under this feature toggle here, you 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 can uh, turn on and off for this sketch. Okay, so use the sketch rover uh, and UI for uh, for sketching. This is the new, new sketch rover. Okay, so currently it's turned on. If you don't want to use this new sketch rover, okay, you, you're not familiar with it. Okay, you, you want to use the old one. You just right click and turn off. Okay, then you turn off, and then after that, uh, you still use you use back the old sketch method. Okay, so this new software is a new option to let you choose whether you want to use the Use that of the sketch over, or you, you can, if you don't want to use this one, you can use that whole one. Yeah, so this is a new solver, sketch over that uh, we have right now in this uh, uh, NX90 series. Okay, so I hope this uh, been very to you. And let me go for another one. Okay, next one more. In time, we you got one hour left. Okay, so let's go for the modeling. So, uh, for the, so for the rest of it, I will show you the videos. Okay, show you videos. So, okay, so the modeling process, um, <clears throat> one of the main thing, one of the, uh, one, one of the main things here change here is that auto remove part change. Okay, so in the past, when you have tried to edit a component in working assembly, you need to make the work part, uh, you need to make the component as a work part first before you edit the component. Which should require a lot of mouse click. For example, you want to edit this component, you need to double click it. Okay, but in this latest version of NX, right there, at the workflow is reduced uh, by fewer mouse click. Okay, for some purpose on the picture shown here, if you want, if you also want to apply the edge plan, edge plan at this portion for this component. Okay, so you just need to just need to click the edge plan uh, command and select the edge here directly. And then the system automatically you make this component as a work part. Okay, so so uh, this one you should to save a lot of mouse, mouse click. So this setting can be turned on and off. Also can be turned on and off by using the uh, custom default. Allow uh, automatic work part change here. Okay, you can go for modeling and generate to change it. Okay, turn on and off many times. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, okay, so this is how the workflow look. So in the current parts top level uh, products SMB and the top level product SMB. So under the command here, uh, you change, you select the chamber you want to use it, and then the selection curve will set to entire SMB. Okay, set to entire SMB, and then you turn on this one. Automatically, this is a new icon next to the selection bar, next to the selection bar. So uh, when this one automatically work part change turn on. Okay. So when you select any any edge or from the component, right, the system automatically make the component as a part. Okay, so this is uh, how you work. Okay, let me show you a video here. So this is the uh, example for the airplane landing gear assembly. So when user want to apply the chamfer, uh, certain component. Okay, so the user need to make sure. Okay, they, 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 they select the chamfer and make sure that entire assembly uh, selection method is selected. And then from here, uh, just select the, the curve or the edge. Particularly, they make this one as work part. Okay, as you can see here at the at the top at the at the SMB navigator here, this one make as a work part really particularly. Okay, so next, uh, if I want to change another component bound, this one still is work part. See, this one is still as a work part. I want to move this portion. Okay, I use move base and directly select this component and automatically the work part from will be changed from this component to here. So very easy, you just key in the value here to directly change it. So with this one, actually the speed design in the SMB concept workflow, uh, the they actually remove the need of uh, uh repeatedly set the work part by using the mouse click button. They actually reduce your mouse click button. I think very easy. 
So you need to, what you need to do is select command and then uh, select the task you want to change, then directly make it as move file. Okay, so this one you spell your plans. Okay, so this is how the things look like. So this is your part change. Okay, so this is uh, for the part change. Okay, next features I want to show you here with the vision snapshot. This is new tool in my next one. Uh, so the snapshot uh, actually create a copy of a uh, body for visual comparisons of the design change. So the snapshot window actually enable to compare the model size by side, side by side, with the option to synchronize view and annotation. A snapshot can be already on top of the geometry to inspect using the transparent slider. So actually, the for here, here are okay. Before you you want to make some change for the part, you can create a feature snapshot. Then after that, um, you done with your modifications. If, if, if you want to review it with your feature snapshot that you create, you can see the in the impact of it. So the feature snapshot can actually review can review side by side. Or if your current design, if you select the design change. So this is how the things look like. Okay, so this is another example for airplane landing gear assembly. So this is the part I want to change. Uh, this is the building part, and I want to change this part. Okay, this this components. Maybe as a work part, uh, open in new windows. So under here, before I make any changes for, for this part, I can go for this one called snapshot. Snapshot, select the last feature here. They actually uh, create another like uh, uh, what you call the snapshot view under here, and at the snapshot yeah folder at the top here actually they have one what you call snapshot folder here. They don't show. So so right now I I try to change the dimensions the previous dimension here. I try to change the sketch, reduce the the thickness. Then after that I can do again from so from here I can see uh before update. Or after update, they have two solid body here, which is not a, a main body. Like this is the store under what you call the virtuous folder. So here actually you can see side by side the change before and after. Okay, before uh, and after how the, the change. I think you can review it. Okay. So we did visual compression and design change. Uh, you really improve understanding for the impact of the change. And also you can you can overlay with your current designs, okay, with your old design here to see what is how the things are. Okay, how the things look, look like. Okay. The uh, transparent is an old one. Okay. The the current one is uh, in blue color. Okay, so this one is a snapshot, picture snapshot. So let's see is a design hole. Okay, so in this new function in, within the uh, single modeling command, design hole. Actually, they actually you can recognize and edit the hole regardless the features, regardless is the part will be history or not with the without history. So if you support editing the whole type like simple type like uh, powder ball, uh, powder sun, pepper, shredded hole. Okay. And this is available for synthetical uh, corner based on solid body. Okay, so this is an example video I'm going to try to show you. Okay, so for example, I want to change this one. <clears throat> so this part here, actually, you can see uh, it's not without any history. This is a dumb solid body. Either this is a import by a step out, I just found. So from here, generally, if when you select the, the whole, you can change the whole diameter that in this is a period that uh, you can do. But in this new new features here, you can select multiple type of the whole you want to change. For example, simple whole color, whole color sign and, and so on. Okay, when, so for this case, case here, I select a counter sign. Okay, color sign. And then after that, when I select this. Oh, the curve, you know, the hole here. Ultimately, they help me to select all together with the chamber here. Okay, select so the chamber here. So, under here, that they indicate that uh, not only for whole diameter, but also for the chamber, was a chamber and also for the degree. Okay, you can change the parameter right now. 
basically you cannot change it. You need to change it, you need to change it separately. Like for someone, you change the whole diameter to then you need to change the chamfer. Okay, but with this one, uh, whole size of you can you can change the type of the hole, and then from here you can change it directly. Yeah, so this will change here for the single modeling with size hole. And next here, uh, model based definitions. Okay. Okay, so this is a new tool in in, in this uh, MX90 series. Okay, so this uh, model based definition actually it will give you a rapid definition for create those PMI, okay, create those PMI using a uh, user defined rules. Means that user they create their own rules based on their common standard and store it as a as a what I call the uh, command template and then apply it optically in the parts okay, by using the uh, 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 logic behind behind the annex. Okay, so which means uh, um, the company can customize a small logic PMI in this for the model based determinations. And let this, let this tool to automate the PMI creation by just one click. Okay, for example, this one, uh, the user just need to click one time Based on the rules, and then automate all these dimensions, PMI will automatically pop up based on the whole. Automate uh, the system will find the whole possible hole and then uh, create those PMI up. Something like auto dimensions, auto dimension that you mentioned that appears like uh, uh, automate uh, the dimensions. Okay, and this one is controlled by the logic that defined by user. User can can set the logic what hole they need to put the dimensions and what is the size they need to find out okay and then what is the output like for the output uh what is the PI output so this one actually actually is uh, come out of the box okay they have 13 rules in in next year come out of the box while using a real library and all these two is created is powered by the ai okay in the cardio intelligence but, but first you need to give a rules before rules in here to let the system know what is the rules that you want to apply. Okay, let's see some example here. Okay, so, so this is an example. Okay, both, so for example, if uh, you as an engineer, you want to create a PMI for all this type of the uh, holes, right? So uh, for today's NX, right? Uh, right for example, NX truck, right? Made a process of ordering about 20 plus a bit time. Okay, made a process of selecting Geometry, like for someone you need to select a lot of uh, surface or age and so on to create all these PMIs. Okay, and also manual entry of tolerance, you need to entry those tolerance manually. So this one takes a lot of time. Okay, but with the annex uh, model based definitions, they actually uh, find the data based on the particular feature recognition, depend on features, and then they, they actually uh, automate those like a uh, tolerance, size, standards, all this is automatic by this one click. Okay, by this one click. This one click, and then after that, uh, all this dimension will, will be automatic pop up. Okay. So this one you say a lot of times. Okay, let me show you an example here to this video. So this is an example that uh, at the left hand side here, at the left hand side here, you can see what I got under the videos I read. They have this part of the rules. Okay. Either is uh, set by by the uh, come out of the box. The, the rules is come out of the box or created by the user. So the look here, uh, one of, of the our work here is created on the touching face with component. Is that um, they want to find out where is the touching face between the components. Okay, okay. So here this is a rules. This is the vital logic rules. So the user what you need to do here is click on these buttons and select the two components that have the possible face touching. Once you click OK, okay the, the system will try to find out, okay, yeah, this is a touching surface between these two components. Okay, so this is the touching surface for these two components. This is the highlight this is. Okay, another another rules here is that come out of the box is that you want to name the components. Okay, for example, here you want to uh, cover up PMI to say that okay, what is it component? Uh, some, something like the in, 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 in 
it to rejoin. So you just click this button, click OK, and then the system automatically help you to put all those dimensions, uh, so all this game I that one is uh, this one. Okay, so this is actually the simple one. Okay, later I will show uh, 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 a complex one, much more complex, where automatically they have come up those dimensions. Okay, so this is the one. Okay, next here, uh, automate by using the payment. Okay, so user actually can customize their own logic, their own logic in this uh, what I call water based definitions. Okay, so this is the, the logic that we have learned. User wants to customize already. Then optically, they can use this what I call this logic here to apply to any part to really come up with dimensions. Okay, so let me show you through this video here. So okay, so under here, uh, if, if you want to create those uh, uh, this modification logic here, so this is how the interface once you turn on they have top portion and the bottom portion. This is bottom portion here is for your example. Okay, for you for you to uh, what you call uh, troubleshoot. Okay, to, to to troubleshoot the logic you make here. Okay, so so this they they come they have this kind of the template they let you choose. So for that, so on that, so for example here under here we have this type of uh, rules that you can put in. For example, create a whole dimension. This is a rules that uh, in, in let's say we put it under here. This is a the logic that we have. Okay, so from here you can see this is the input. This is input and this is output. The input here means that we need for this rules here, we need to key in the whole what is the whole uh, locations, what's the duration, what's the grid. Okay, then only the come out the dimensions. So currently these are three information we need to supply these three information to, to this uh, rules. Okay, so to in order to supply this one, right, you need to find out why to find the hole. Okay, to find the hole, where is the hole? Okay, so under here we have this one called the five hole logic. Okay, so this five hole right, actually, uh, if you cannot find here, you can search here. Okay, you can search here, uh, fill down here, and then actually it's same as this hole, five hole. Yeah, you can search. It. So I bring in. Okay, bring in. So this under this five hole, right? Uh, you. You fetch this of information for information to, to be here. Okay, so, so this one actually more on programming, so more on programming, so. but uh, it, it reduces a lot of programming, uh, programming uh, function. Right? You need to remember what is a function, you need to type all this programming, but you, you, the user just need to link up the connection. That's all. Okay, you don't need to have a program language to, to program this. Okay, so this is a very very uh, handy condition. For us, for us, for us about here, okay, we need to supply whole informations and what is the divisions, okay, uh, to let you the user choose. Okay, so this is the buttons. So this three information here is done, and then I uh, create output. Uh, so this outputs. So from here, right, actually they actually have one dimension created. So so when you create this logic at the top here. They actually uh, run through this logic at this part here, very part operation. So currently, uh, by using this logic here, they will set only one dimension will come up. Okay, because why this one you only supply one uh, whole information. Okay, one whole information. Okay, if you want to call all this whole in this body, right? Okay, you have this another function here, group, right? Have a group. So uh, supply this whole uh, function in, as a list, uh, as a list, all the holes here as a list, and supply to this hole. Okay, give an image to this hole, and automatically, yeah, all these dimension automatically you come up. Okay, so from here, as you as, as you can see, uh, you just a few click buttons to customize this one. You can set your camera rules, right? For example, you can save this rules, this logic, as one template. The user just need to click this logic. Okay, for example, this one, this new logic for dimension logic. Click one time here, drag here. here. Supply doesn't need to supply what is a division, what is a grade here. You want to for for this uh, dimension creation? Click okay, automatically. This is how you to find out all the dimensions, all the whole, 
uh, apply the dimension on top. Okay, so from here you can see really easy. No need to, if you use the PFI, you no need to uh, create those dimension one by one. Okay, just use this rule, bring it, bring in, and then create this kind of uh, uh, dimensions. Okay, so this one is customizable, and then you can customize based on your company standard. Okay, so this is a very flexible tool to let you customize. So this is what I call the um, model-based definitions. It's a powerful tool for the diagramming interface to support the building and excluding room used to uh, create those uh, PMIs. Okay, so this is very useful tool if you use a PMI. Okay, okay I hope this one uh, will bring value to you. Um, okay. Next, I will go for the freeform. Okay, freeform, what's the, what's the new for the freeform portion? Okay, for the freeform, uh, in MX um, series, we have new add on modules for freehand drawings for wireframe curve on bodies. We call that uh, MX dropship. Okay, this is a new capability in MX. Uh, actually, offer a drawing on planner, okay, on planner or 3D freeform geometry, either is is aesthetic uh, or associate approach. Okay, so ship can construct as a pen stroke. Okay? So means means that you can use uh, a mouse stroke as a pen, pen stroke to draw an actual curve geometry. Okay, to working for working on the planar geometry, we have a analogous shape to recognize built in, try to embed to create the line. Term. Okay, so so they have the various ways to modify the curve. Okay, when you use a plan to create, create those curves from this, uh, what you call, to draw the curve, right? Actually, all this curve is in spline. You can edit the spline or uh, spline later on. Okay, so let me show you a video here. So we have an example here. I want to follow the picture. This is the picture that I want to follow to draw the outline and this 3D geometry. Okay. So I just call out this and let's put it. Okay. So from here, here, I just use this draw shape, select the face, and I can use a, a plan stroke here to draw a line, family, right? Like, like this. Freehand. Okay, freehand. So from when you while you draw the curve right, actually they project the curve to the surface you selected. So uh, this part here, you can see uh, when you are drawing, the, the 3D curve actually, you optically you project to the 3D surface here. So for example, under here, I draw this outline, the great picture here. Yeah, so this 3D curve you, you show up. Okay, so I draw another one. Another one I draw up. Yep, so this is how it looks like. So you change the view here, you can see all these lines here, you the only curve you created. If you want to draw it, you mean this curve mainly. Okay, when you have a closed loop, with the closed loop, the, the system will automatically detect this is closed loop and help you to close the, the curve automatically. Yeah, so I have the trim. Okay, so this is done uh, automatically if you have a closed loop sketch or curve. Then, and then after that, for example, if you want to edit, you want to edit this curve, you can edit. Like for example, I want to trim this one together with this uh, this line here. Yeah, you can just trim it perfectly. Okay. And then uh, for example, you want to edit this later on. When you double click it, you can edit it as normal as uh, the spline pole uh, edit. Okay. So from here, you can edit as a pole. So in diary, actually, the head sketch idea can easily convert to a curve data, to a curve data. Okay, in MX, we don't need to redraw the using the curve tool. So if you have like, uh, for example, those uh, pen, touch, touch screen with pen, you can use these tools to, to draw up your screen. Okay, this is already handy. This is a new model in this uh, MX view. Okay, so this is an extra shape. So another update here is the texture modeling command. Okay, so the what's this the texture and modeling command is for? Actually, they apply a 2D 
take a 2D graphic and, and texture into, into a 3D model as 3D geometry. So what it does actually is actually automatically it flatten, it flatten the 2D, uh, 2D, 3D geometry into a 2D uh, UV uh, parameter space. So after that, you can um, perform some, some transform, okay, some skill and some pattern uh, based on the, the, the picture you put in. And then after that, uh, you, you, you can select uh, either is embossed or punched through. Okay, of course, means that you 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 have this one of the features popping up, or you want to pass uh, pass through the, the features. Okay, you can you can have a module picture inside. So okay, let's go for this example here. Okay, so I have this model, and then I want to put some picture inside. Okay, and then it's a in the three D. So uh, what I need to do here is that I just select the area that I need to put those image in. So from here, you can see uh, the, the alignment here, this line, this control here, is whereby how this thing look like. Okay, for example, the flatten, you select this tree surface, one, two, three, that you flatten it in, in, in the right hand view here. So this is three phase. First phase, this is the, the circle phase here, the half circle phase here. This is half circle phase, the pattern already. And this small portion here is actually this portion. Yeah, this portion. And then this portion here is this portion. This is over portions. Come to the back. Okay, go to the back. So this is over portion. We actually flatten it in this in this view. Okay. So later on, I use this view to put our, our image here, and then it will be based on this uh, area here to, to, to apply this image in the 3D. Okay. So let me show you. So here I can uh, adjust the, the control, how the control looks like. So the control here, you can adjust again, horizontal, or vertical, and so on. Okay. So after that, I, I just. Okay. Input uh, image. Okay, from here I can resize it. Okay, I can reduce the size, excuse it. And for example, I want to put in, in, in this area here. Okay. Across this three surface, across this three surface, first surface, second surface, and third surface. Okay, across this three surface means that I want to put at here. Okay. So from here I can set it as a, what is our minimum offset. One mm, okay. Offset out, okay. I can click after that. I click a show result, and this is how the result looks like. As you can see here, the location I put here actually is three across this three surface. Yeah, so this is same similar as this surface across this three surface. One, two, three, and then automatically there you uh, offset out if the one mm is the up from the surface. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. How the result okay? And then after that, right, actually you can use after this one done already, you can uh, send this one for 3D print diary. Okay. So to be honest to you, this one, the, the output file, the output file for this one actually is in uh face of body, face of body. Okay, so actually uh, if you have the face of machining uh, functions, right, you can use it for for for, for CAM to cut this one. But usually for this part, uh, you, you can use it for 3D printer because the 3D printers that can accept the facet uh, SDL file. You can export this as SDL file and then go for 3D print. Uh, okay, so this is a very new tool in, in NXE to allow you to turn your picture, 2D graphic, and texture in a 3D geometry. Okay, so uh, for example, if you have some methods, and you just need to use your phone to take a picture. Okay. You take a picture and then save inside the annex here and bring it in. You know, they make it as a 3D pattern. Okay, you take a 3D picture, texture. Very easy. So you can use this uh, functions I call the texture model. Okay, I hope this being very to you. And the question I go for the next one. Okay, fit surface to one. Uh, this surface actually in NXE is generally used for reverse engineering. Okay, if you use reverse engineering in NX, 
Uh, this one is a uh, use tools for you, very useful tool for you. And then they have a lot of improvement on selections. For example, here you you can select this type of uh, selection like single face. You can select a single face, rough brush. You can use a brush to brush the over the area you want to want to have this piece of face and so on. Okay. So this survey actually is uh, just to keep you away from it, if unless that you don't know about this piece of this what is this very useful. Okay, this survey actually is used for, for example, if a tree scan, we scan the parts and then we want to reuse and join the parts. Okay, so to reuse and join the part, you need to rebuild up the 3D. Okay, to rebuild up 3D, right? Uh, for example, we if you want to have a plane, this I have a plane, you need to create a plane. For this surface scan surface here. So you use this free surface here to select all this scan data, this six scan data flat surface here to fit a plane, plane or surface on top. Okay, so this is why we call the free surface and use it for recently because to create a surface. Yeah. So here you have this improvement. Okay, so let me show you uh, this this video here. Okay, so this actually is a scan data. Scan data uh, from train scanner. So we bring into the next year we probably join, and then after that we have this kind of fit surface uh, functions here. So under here, I want to fit a cylinder uh, by using this what I call a uh, printing face. So previously that doesn't have this what I call printing face selections. You need to paint the, the region that you want to fit manually, but with these functions. The, the system automatically detect the the survey you selected. For example, here if you select this region, the system automatically know that oh this is the cylinder, and then they they will try to highlight all other surface that have this cylinder characteristics. Okay, so uh, let me show you here. So you just need to select one time and automatically help you to fit this cylinder. Okay, you can see, yeah. They know that this is the area you pick this region, you know, or this is straighter. They try to help you to uh, expand the sections. Okay, and then after that, yeah, this is cylinder that we uh, created in 3D. Okay, and then after that, if you want to like uh, create a single this one, this one, and line together, you can also set it under here as a single surface. So if this one can be select and then you click with this bit based on the schedule. Plane. Okay, right now I'm going to create a plane based on the base uh plane surface here. So if you select one is select this portion here, pick one this one a small portion, the system know oh this is a plane. So so they, they try to expand up the selections until here and stop. What is a plane that have the same plane uh, characteristic with your selection here? So uh, try to expand out the selection under here, then they stop automatically. Okay, you don't need to, to stop everywhere. Okay, you need to define the song here. The system has to define. Okay, so this you fit it. Okay, with all this surface, right, you can you can uh actually fit and then become a whole solid body. Okay, so this is what you call the reuse engine. Okay, the reuse engine. This is the other surface that one fit, and then you just need to pick the surface and automatically you have to create this surface. And after that, you just clean off this region and become a solid body. Okay, I stand up uh, this this few surface here, and then after that, uh, user can trim it. Okay. Combine together in, 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 in one piece by using this combine uh, functions. This combine function also a new a new tools in this new FC. Okay, we no need to pick the surface one by one to trim it. Okay, so this is the overall uh, reaction engine workflow. After that, you apply the the H as plan. Okay. Going to the scan data by referring to the scan data. Okay, so this is the 
interface command and uh, other tools that create as uh, uh, combinations of uh, train and edge plan and so on. Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, this phase. Okay, cache from phase body. Uh, uh, doesn't have an example here, but this I just want to let you know that, for example, if you have a very performed surface that uh, you scan up, and then you don't want to use this method, like using the method to fit one by one, because this one um, they actually take some time and need to have an experienced user to do this race engine. But if it doesn't have the knowledge for this uh, race engine, okay, actually you can use this tool. From basic body. Okay, for example, here, what, what this does here actually is that um, if you scan a part, if you scan a part after the scan RRB, and then you just import the scan data inside and use this command, cache from basic body, to let the system automatically fit, automatically fit uh, those surface on top. Okay, so uh, using this method, like they automatically create all this surface and then become a solid body, and no need to do all this region in the job. Okay, but this one, okay, this one is uh, recommended for those like, um, to say those parts that uh, the accuracy is not so tight, not so constant, accuracy is not so constant, you can use the method. Okay, and then it, only usable for those like a few forms of base part. I think if you use it on this kind of uh, primitive part, primitive part means that they have a lot of flat surface cylinder and so on, right? uh, each band and so on. Okay, this part actually is not 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 so suitable for cash form surface of body. This one really is suitable for just a uh, very free form surface, right? free form surface. Okay, so what it does here is actually probably we provide a very powerful tool to automate automate the construction of complex block, okay? Automatically, you just one click button, select the parameter, what is your size, uh, mesh size you want to create, and then automatically uh, the system help you to patch all the surface with the code name to the scan data. Okay, so this is the, uh, just let the system to create, you don't need to do anything. Okay, so this is how you are creating a piece of body. In this, we have this function in the next Okay, so another thing from update here is that uh, uh, conversion modeling. Actually, conversion modeling is uh, uh, available in MX11, starting 11. So, this is update for you. Okay, if you have like, if you're using MX 7.5 or so on, uh, conversion modeling actually is the tool to, to let you edit the SDR bar. For example, SDR bar, if you want to edit, if you, if you import into MX, right? You make it as a conversion body, and then you can edit it directly using as shown uh, and uh, what you call uh, trim, unite, and so on. Just treat it as a normal solid body, yeah, to edit it. I think so. This is why you call it a conversion model. So, okay, but that's why I am not going for details since uh, this is from the next chart update. I just really, really, really prove as a conversion model. Okay, so in this uh, update here, we have these more mesh features. Uh, which will help you to like modify those SDR uh, at the region you want to edit. For example, here, this picture is true. So, uh, okay. so for example, here I'm going to edit this region here. I just highlight this region and change the direction to this one. Okay, to this side. Then obviously the system will try to uh, this for the other other sur surface and try to adapt your change. Yeah, you you try to expand up this region here and try to expand up this region here symmetrically. Okay, symmetrically you change it. Okay, so you can edit the SDR file very, very fast by using this one for the more mesh features. Okay, so let me show you this example here. Okay, so this is an example that uh, a car body scan the map use uh, scan by a 3D scanner. And then my object is here is to mock this whole thing. Okay? Uh, change some of the shape from certain parts. Okay, so from here, what I need to do here is that I, I select this, this scan data, highlight it as a cache, and then I define this one is, uh, as a region, so three as a three region. So from here, with this pool, right, okay, I, I define first, I define this one as my region. So I can move the part, okay, I define this is my region. 
how to visual, visual look like. And then after that, I was defined already. Uh, right now, I need to move a certain part. Okay, so I just try to move it. Okay, move out. And then this one, move the cache and move the cache. And then scan the data, you try to adapt to a change. You try to modify any other change. Okay, so this is a very, very, very powerful tool to let you to add in the SDL file very quickly. Okay. So from here, I just move here, and then this one you can reduce it. Yep. Move in, and then the top portion it becomes a sharp. Okay, so this is one example here. I'll show another example here. Uh, okay, so maybe let's go for this side here and then bring up another body mirror body and see how the how the change look like okay so this here is got another example whereby um i'm going to change a certain this portion here so let's select this body i can reduce my cage just now the cage is for over body but you can reduce it to a certain portion for example here i can change the directions I can reduce the cage size. Okay, so I can change the uh, location to here. Means that I just want to modify this portion. Other portion I don't want. Okay, so that's now the the the, the example here is modifying the whole thing. But you can you can customize your cage manually. This region. Okay, I can I can uh, okay. So that I already defined this is my region. I want to modify. Okay, I select this one as symmetric model. Like I said, when I Select and change here. The same change will apply at the right hand side, another side. So from here, what I need to do here is that uh, I try to modify the whole portion here uh, as then I uh, uh, scale up. Okay. So to see this one, you will scale up, and then this one you will change locations. So all you adapt your to a change. Okay. So this is the whole portion. Uh, I change it right now. I create another cache, another cache. I want to change the top portions, so I create another cache here. Uh, I can create multiple cache in, in, in this one, one file. Okay, it depends on, on your uh, preferences, okay, or your requirements. So, what I need to do here is that I just select uh, this whole this top portion here, create a cache at these top portions. Design it according to the size of the cage of this part. Okay, then after that, I I just move it, then change it to uh, okay, I create a cage ready, and then I try to transform the cage. So what I need I do here is that go up, and then all this is will be extend to the location you specify. Okay. Okay, so this is a very, very good tool that, for example, if you have an SDL file, you want to change the whole locations. You want to change the whole location, you want to modify the uh, whole locations, but you don't want to remodel the whole thing. You can, you can use this tool, like, well, I, I just want to modify this whole to uh, uh, turn the left hand side about uh, 3MM. Yeah, I just drag this to 3MM and then all you model. Okay. So, but, but this one, but this one only applicable for those uh, SDR file or base body. Okay, before you change this, you use this one, you need to uh, convert your file into your, uh, you can turn the file into a face body first. You can turn by using the MX here, face body from body. You can convert the face body here. Like for example, you create this part here by using the normal cat tools. You can directly inside the MX here, convert to face body by using this command. I think convert it to face body and then you can use this code. Uh, use this code. Okay. okay. So this one I don't think it's related to you. Okay, so free form here is done. Uh, next I'll go for SMB. SMB part here, uh, they have this new update what you call the SMB coupler. Uh, previously the next SMB constraint, they have this kind of uh, normal constraint like uh, this touch line and so on. Okay, so this normal constraint. But they have this one called the joint and capillary constraint, additionally, this constraint. Okay, which allow you to apply the gear, gear constraint. Like for example, if you apply a gear constraint with the what you call the ratio, uh, when you move this gear and this 
the other gear you move according to your ratio and so on okay so they have this one called the slider joint or pivot and so on they have this uh, linear gear type okay so all this you have this new government new uh, constraint like this under this assembly so let me show you an example here So this is a gear example. Okay, by if I want to create this gear ratio, I just need to have uh, Kani is not connected. This two is not connected. They will be individually. And what I need to do here is that for example, I want to uh, give a ratio relationship between these two gear. I just select this one and select this one, uh, the axis here, and give you a ratio. The current asset is 1.666. Yeah, and then apply it. So, after, <clears throat> after that, right, you just try to move this one, and then all this is uh, you change according to your uh, ratios of gear ratio. Okay. So, this is uh, how the things work out. So, we have bring up three together, then the same constraint here so all will be moved together <coughs> okay so this is a gear coupler okay you can always change to like for example negative means that move another side here yeah so you move with you you use a negative value means that you move uh, reverse way Okay, so this is the SMB. So uh, another update for SMB here is that they have the SMB load performance. They increase the improve their SMB load performance. Okay, so uh, NS for this book is to minimally loads a lightweight display load pushes. Okay, so for example, you can have very, very large SMB in the loads. Okay, in period and next slide, actually you need to wait for all this what I call the common load that only can move. View the part and modify the part and see through the parts. But in new data and next version here, actually they have this call called the partial list. They, they try to load the part individually, okay, and while loading, you still able to rotate the assembly and view the assembly and components. Okay, so this is very handy. And yeah, let me show you the example here. So while this one turned on, manually reloads, okay, I open up a very large assembly. So this is the example for the big uh, ship. So while loading the common side, actually you, this one is still loading, it's still not fully loaded. Okay, the common is still is only loaded up in the 3D area, but you still can interact with your components or the assembly in this 3D. To be here, this view here. Okay, so from here you can hide and show certain components while you're loading a file loading. You, you, you can you can uh, you have list of pause loads and stop loads or copying loads. Okay, so while this loading line is you can interact with your uh, 3D model here and section it and so on. Okay, and carry the, the parts still loading, you still have to fully load them. They still load the loading. So while loading is you can use this to like uh, section time and so on. And also they improve a lot on the section because because basically if you section cut uh, uh, a big assembly, a big assembly, then you have a uh, very lack. Okay. The the the, the, the screen will lack. But in this uh the next one they they improve that they improve that. Okay. So this one, yeah, this is a uh, kind of I think it's uh, very loaded really, and this is how the things look like. So the suppression you can use uh, suppress to control suppresses with the components and so on. Yeah. Okay, and then they bring in this one and then open up this one, the common and so on. Yeah, so this is the new update in this NX for many loads options. While loading the big components, you still can. Uh, view your parts. Okay, let's jump to the next uh, portion here whereby uh, the data exchange are 
Okay, the main highlight here for the beta agent is the trading period. Okay, PSG, the index, uh, we, we doesn't have this uh, trading period, but in this later version index, we have this what we call the new solution allowed you to share design using uh, this trading PDF. <coughs> so the technical data package allows you to publish data standard templates and share it across your uh, your, your your enterprise, your customers or your suppliers and so on. Okay, so this is the three D PDF example. Okay, let me show you. So uh, for example, you really have already have this all, all this game plan and the view. Okay, all this view already created in here inside your index trading review. So under here, uh, what you need to do here is that you just export your press on this plus publish button and ultimately they will up the they will export it to some stock user. So <coughs> all this is a features. Just publish it. And then you select either you want to export a JT or 3D PDF and select a template. Okay, this template can be customized. And then after that, you just select the option you want and then just click OK to export it. Oh, this is the color, the color color. Okay. So this is the background color and the object color, the other color you can define it. And after that, click OK and then you convert, auto click over to 3D PDF. So under this, I was uh, spotted really this PDF when it come up. Yeah, you can view it in inside here. For example, if you want to like uh, select certain view, okay. So this one, this is back view, top view, side view, okay. Like this kind of uh, customizations based on it. Okay, under his view, PMI view, yeah, all this one. You also can rotate your part in here. This here only they they only change the view they want to view. You can zoom in, you can select. Yeah, you can modify uh, the view okay, in this 3D view. Okay. So, this is uh, a little bit in this uh, uh, later than next time. And then, you I agree, I don't have to do, but I just want to show you they have this uh, latest module, this is an addition module. Okay, on top of the pre and next view, I agree, right? They have the, the standard, but they also have this what you call this. Cadence commercial library, which is online. Okay, we can get it online. For example, if you have this license, the system license, so you can access all these standards. Okay, all these standards uh, from this what you call the real library. Okay, through online. This one is update uh, daily. This one is update daily. We really need to update manually uh, from annex. We really need to install in this. Okay. They, this one, the folder here actually is connected to their server. Okay, when select this one for the products folders, this use library folders right from the calendar here, they actually connected to their server. So everything here actually is updated uh, to the latest versions. Okay, so actually this, this that tree is like a, a, a map drive, a map drive. Okay, if you know how to use a computer, so right? The, actually, the map drive to their server and drag their what we call the, the their standards from the server to your in, into your index. Okay, so you can use this all these standards here. Uh, got lots or a lot. Um, maybe they have a fifteen fifteen international standards. They have a seven hundred plus vendors standards. Okay, they got a lot of the standard under here. They let you use it. Okay. So this is what I call the latest uh, user really that we have here. So uh, next thing here I will show you is structure. But I think the time is not so. Okay. So uh, under here the structure. Thing, okay. What this structure is used for is that okay. For example, you want to create this structure field. Okay. You create that next. You need to create manually and then cut off these regions. This this join manually. Okay. In this laser and that's why with, with this new module here, you don't need to do it manually. Okay, you just first you, you just draw out this line. Okay, with you by using the template under the structure field. And then automatically you just select this line uh, with your template. Then automatically they, they help you to create this structure field. Okay. So this one, let me show you through this review. 
Okay, so I'll go through here. <coughs> so here, uh, what I need to do here is uh, using this structure frame command here to create a frame. Okay, so under here, the frame here, I just create this frame button. Okay, is this draw up uh, uh, <coughs> a frame, base frame? And then uh, after that, you can hit the value here, and then you can extend out. And then the, uh, this, this one actually is a line, it's a curve. It's a curve. So this is to a template, okay, to let you select. And then after that, for some this one, this frame, you want to extend out or copy another frame up. You can just uh, copy out. Okay, so this is a paper space. Uh, so copy out. And then so here copy out okay and then, and then after that you can draw a line manually for someone you just create a line here connect this from here to here manually okay then draw the line manually okay if you don't want to use their the, the own template form okay so once this curve created right once it curve created next i go for this what i call uh, uh frame creations Okay, so by using this line, by using this line as a reference, right? Okay, you, you, you can set your standard, like for example, the placement either is from center, from inside, or from outside. Okay, so this is the standard you, you, you can predefine, okay? First, in NX. And then what is the connection type? Connection type, how the connection type, uh, uh, they, they are cut, okay? For example, none means that no cut, Metal means that cut at 45 degree. Cut means that they cut one side, another side remain. Box there uh, is cut another side, but another side remain in reverse way. Okay, so this is the cutting uh, region template you want to use. It. So this is for horizontal and this is for vertical type. Okay, you can set it physically. After you set, okay, you you you, you call this member. So this member they have raised up of the channel type like for the channel, C channel, I beam, and so on. So this template you can choose from this uh, list here. Okay, so right now I choose a square tube. And what's a great type and then what's the size? Okay, so this all this size you can be choose from here, raised up size standard based on this list. Okay, so I just choose a hundred plus uh, three plus three. And uh, after that, I uh, just select the curve that I want to apply this method. Okay, just slightly manually, just like this. Okay, just like this. Select it. And then automatically, they have it to trim at the portion, at this end portion, connection portion. They have it to trim or cut it according to the standard asset. Okay, yeah, just very easy. Okay. Okay, so let me just. As you go through here, the ones okay already. I just click OK and then they're having to create a components. All these components and trim out this portion. So from the left side here, you can see all the structure member. And what's the corner? Yeah, they have this associative. You can edit any 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 types, edit this structure any types manually. For example, if, if you want to edit this corner and want to cut in this, this method. I can uh, file the corner here, feature corner here, and edit. Yeah, all is parameterized, I can say. All is parameterized. And then the single, single thing here, for example, if I want to add two more things, two more lines here, and then I can also select the reference. Okay, for example, carry the reference stick at the center. If I don't want, I can select those point okay so there's a call reference point to let you select so the, under here uh the system let you select all these points to mean that you want to use which reference as your initial uh placement so all these point right is a is a template form so you can just select and then let the system to check on this is the point and then how the placement will look like okay so this is the handy tools that let you select from this template so I want to click, select, and now the hand will cut. Oh, you can see it already cut. And you cut. So all this member, I can create this member also. So L, L shape. Okay, angle is good. Cool. 
two what is material size what is uh, uh parameters for the l members here select here and then after that i can rotate click in x and y okay rotate the angle here and click okay which direction i, I, I want yeah okay, i choose here okay so it's really handy to, to let you uh, customize this number so please and next slide okay we need a lot of words to create this member but with this structure designer structure frame designer okay so this one all is used to take you really can create a frame very fast okay so let's go through uh, this next one edit manufacturing so uh, for the edit manufacturing here actually they, they have discovered before uh device phase uh, phase of device phase improvement they can select those like for someone if you import a face of body face of body means that I scan the data inside right? or any SDL file you they double from the internet you, you import inside and all this surface it become one body one body and one surface if you want to divide the surface out right you can use this divide face finder okay so very fast then okay you can select those what you call uh, cylinder type or surface right you can divide all this as a surface okay you can divide this as a, as a surface you can see the edge here they are really divided yeah so they have this divided surface you can you can use this surface to do for like simulations like and plant force and so on uh, uh, the top here so so this is another example from the scan data okay so actually if you don't if you don't want to use a selection method you can use this brush method to select the region you want to you can adjust the size of the brush here okay you just uh what you call uh, select these regions and then after that uh, divide these portions okay so right now this use media selections select and divide this surface okay divide this space so so after all this divided uh, just for you what's going to do yeah i'll just hold this divided and then after that you can use it for like simulations like apply force and you can also use this one as your assembly constraint like for someone you want to touch this surface yeah you can divide this surface now and then you put can put this sdl file into uh, components assembly assembly and then use it as your constraint this as a constraint because see that here we have the selection already you can select this surface can use this as a constraint method to constrain withdraw uh SMP. Yeah, you can use this also. Yeah, okay. So uh next thing here is the lattice design structure. Okay, so they have an improvement for this what you call the lattice structures. I can select you can set multiple of the uh, uh, type of the lattice. So for someone uh, in, in this region here, I just select this solid body and ultimately uh, in, in inside here they, they join out the, the random lattice structures okay and the like this space or the solid body so we can remesh it okay so previously they have these are random structures you can have this remesh triangular so they have the much more uh, uh organized structures okay organized structures lattice structures that uh, they created so they have this function here that so once you create this uh, you like this structure here you can have the uh, unite with your original body and become uh, a part okay so this is how the structure like this structure look like and then you can unite it by using a coercion modeling modeling method unite with your current cat data and then after that you can use it for 3d prints yeah. so this is okay so for the drafting side here uh, just very fast question review then the drafting side they have this arrangement support Basically, they have inside the part list, right? It doesn't have this arrangement. For example, uh, arrangement you you have this arrangement for 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 your set of the assembly. You suppress certain certain components. Okay, when you use this arrange, arrangement, uh, you want to apply it at the, um, inside the bond. Okay, the bond always show you always show all the components that are available in your parts. Okay, so you will show like based on the arrangement uh, type of your term. Okay, so under here we have this arrangement for part here. Under 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 part, this we have this arrangement. 
So user can select which arrangement that the, they want to show inside this what you call the form list. So uh, when user change the arrangements, right? Okay, so go to like a housing arrangement one. Right now, you using housing internal. So the part is here change. The part here actually change. Okay. So once you can change already, yeah. So these are based on the list. So you change to another type. Then here this change. So when you place your bloom list here, you have different type. Of and you can place it according to your uh, arrangement type list. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, little support. Okay. So another thing here is that uh, whole trade call out. So for whole trade call out for the period and next time, if you encounter this type of whole line. Uh, we have the hook cut through a plate, multiple plate, and then this hole, the, the separate discount, they call it a simple through hole, and this one is they call it a simple hole. So, 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 so in, in this later annex, right, uh, they can call out this whole feature as the uh, one feature. Right? Like, for example, this is a simple hole, um, how many times right? in, in, in one whole piece? Okay, so this is an example that uh, we go through here. So under here, uh, under here we can a whole call up okay, this feature to uh, cut through a multiple plate. Okay, they, when you select these features, right, they actually uh, call up the whole features from top to okay, from top to bottom. You no longer like define this one as a color ball for these portions. This one simple hole and this one simple hole is separate the tree. So, but this one, uh, they have this function to call in, in, in as a whole picture. Okay, another thing here is the VR. Okay, we are here that the uh, edX support VR that allow you to view the parts of the SMD in, in one uh, one to ones. Okay, so here, uh, what we need to do here is uh, call this VR, edX VR, uh, and then yep, the user just you can bring in this VR. This VR environments, okay, and then section cut it and view the components uh, one one to one. Okay, let's give one. So from here, the user can uh, perform real start of checking, like for example, hide certain parts and view what is your components, okay, what is the material use, <coughs> what status, okay, okay, in, 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 in these recommendations. Okay, so under here, okay, you can change this. Uh, uh, manual bar and so on. So from here, you also can perform some manual uh, measurements. Like for example, I hide this component. I want to measure, uh, use a measure rule tool here to measure my distance from this top portion to this uh, stand, this point here, okay, to this uh, that point here. Okay, so this measurements. So this is a review. So after that, you can uh, put some review here, uh, change. Like for example, you highlight this area, uh, okay, take this one as a picture and so on, okay. Okay, we do uh, rework and so on, okay. You can take it as a picture and send to uh, your engineer and so on. Yeah, so this is uh, the we are supposed to. Okay, take the picture and then you can send to email and so on. Yeah, so this is we are. So uh, I think that's all for my portion. Uh, be before that, I, before I end, I go for the customer success story. So this is uh, the customer uh, ED LG is a system based engine service provider working for global automatic industry. Okay, particular in area of uh, electrical vehicle. Okay, so this actually is the and actually is a battery pack for the vehicles. So what is the challenge here is that uh, for this VP. <clears throat> even battery cooling uh, okay system set right they have uh these kind of things uh, to control okay so to control this cooling pad right this cooling right okay uh the two items that you need to control is that uh they need to control the temperature range and also the uh, what the term thermal run away okay so the the they, they need to optimize this one by using uh, their software in, in one system, but they cannot achieve it, they, they must use multiple software to achieve that. But in NX, right, uh, we NX, right, they can achieve it by using the NX by using uh, simulations, like for example, analyze the speeder and then identify the design place, 
and then optimize uh, using the, the topology uh, next and then uh, prepare by using the uh, uh, commodity modelings and then 3D pinouts. So in, in by using the NS academic and manufacturing uh, solutions like they actually uh, reduce a lot for the pressure drop, uh, 45 uh, 47 percent pressure drop. Okay, and then to uh, got increase uh, for the mesh flow 10 percent, and then you reduce a lot of the design time 50 percent. Okay, so this is a, a lot of design change, design time to reduce. They chose the solution to MX. So another success story here is that uh, this company they actually do the some okay positive okay arm positive for the patients. So this is for the medical portions. So they actually take the patient 3D scan uh, for partial arms and merge it to 3D data data to ensure the perfect socket fit. Okay. So with uh, with the MX uh, solutions like conversion model. Uh, with the NN conversion modeling, right? They actually, after the scan, yeah, they actually can take the scan data directly and then, then model it, okay, directly. So they have three times faster, faster to socket test to ensure the perfect fit, okay, compared to the uh, previous uh, methods. So this is the CEO, uh, CIMA uh, has helped us a lot proceed to and democratize their, their uh, our technologies. The previous technologies. Okay, so this is a success story from the customers. So yeah, I think that's all for my side. Now. So uh, so right now we enter for the Q and A section. Right? Okay, so uh, any questions? Okay, hold on, not so fast. Okay, so uh, any questions uh, from the editing side? Okay, you can ask any questions right now. Okay, so uh, I think uh, I, will, I will stop here. Okay, I think I will stop here. So uh, you still can ask the questions at the Q&A Q &A chat box there. If you have any questions, I'll try, I'll try to answer it. So uh, I think we we'll stop here and then we we'll come back around 2.30. Oh, okay, so so now we are asking them for the poll about which version of NX are them using currently. So let's have uh, one minute for them to answer it. Yeah, they have the poll for, for that. Yeah. So yeah, you just uh, answer the poll. Okay, uh, so next, do, do you guys have any question? If you don't mind, you can... Un uh, Click the Q and A and type in your question there. Or if you want to have a voice up, you just raise your hand. I will I will give you the uh, rights to talk. So uh, never mind. We, we, we still we still uh ever in, in, in this room here. Okay. So for others that have no questions, right? I uh, think that's all for for my portions. So uh. I, Things that we come back after the break times. Okay, uh, break times is 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. We come back after 2 for 10 portions under admins. So, uh, any, anyone of you, if you don't have a question, you can leave that up right now and then come back after 2, 2 p.m. for 10 portions. Okay, if you have questions, you can have, uh, we still have a here. Okay, that's the screen. So, anytime you can, you can come back use, with the uh, same after. link. Yeah, you can use for a single. Yeah, can come back using a single. Yes. Okay. So yeah, that's all my modules. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Okay, I hope my voice is clear, right? Okay. So uh, okay, let me introduce myself. Okay, I'm Edwin. Okay, I'm a senior application engineer for Dream Technology. Okay, I'm uh. Okay. Uh, uh, focus. Uh, my my job as a senior application is more on the camp side, right? So anything, okay, you can contact me regarding the camp. Okay, today's topic, okay, will be on uh camp uh update, okay, from version twelve to uh the nineteen series. 
Okay, I will begin like the cat side, okay, or uh, on the interface first, okay. Most of the interface, okay, is the same, right? Okay, it's exactly the same as the uh, what we see from the cat side, okay. But for the cam side, okay, we will have an extra uh, explorer type dialogue, okay. This, this probably uh, it will be a bit different, okay. Maybe you will uh, have some time, a hard time, okay, to look for the command, but do not worry because there's a, a fine command, okay, over here for you to search. This is especially uh, useful, very useful, okay. Sometimes, okay, you may rely a lot on the fine command, okay. So I'll have a video, okay, uh, to show, okay, the slide, okay, uh, how how this uh, new dialogue is. Okay, the dialogue okay, will be uh, different from the original NX draft. I think uh, for the 18 series, some of it is still using the old, old, old template. Okay, I think from uh, 1872. Okay, over here, here, the site, okay, will be the grouping, right? All the grouping, okay, uh, for the command. Okay, so if two, okay, it will be grouped in two free rate, it will be on the free rate. So you click on the specific, okay, grouping, then you can find, okay, the uh, area to change. Okay. So this is grouping. Okay, the, the generic command is in, okay, uh, every grouping okay you will see the generate also so once you change it you can immediately select the generate okay then the find command right uh you can actually key in the code like let's say if you want stock okay you can key in the stock and uh you can change okay it, we will point you point you to the uh the, the the command you you are looking for so this one will be very very powerful last time okay you have to know where your command is but today okay uh with the search command okay uh it's it's very friendly yeah. okay trust me this one okay uh before that uh initially you use probably eh, you do not know where your command is but the longer you use okay with the search command or find find command okay you can actually uh uh use it uh very well okay next one okay uh i will go into uh the mass edit okay last time when we have a few program here let's say four program okay maybe we are using the same that cut okay uh then when we change one we have to open one two three four times to change them okay even the cut pattern and all that so with this mask command you can select four of these command together and then click on the mask edit and then change the command so you do not need to uh change it four times okay let's say if you have a double cut okay you want to change it okay you select four of it right click mask edit and change them uh, all together uh, with one, uh, one, 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 one uh, selection only. Okay, next, okay, uh, is to uh, track the short test tool. Uh, okay, uh, previously we need to uh, create a two path. Okay, uh, no, cre uh, we create create a two path. Then uh, we know whether our uh, our holder will hit onto the part or not. So with this okay new command actually you can actually generate the uh, the shortest uh. so shortest then you probably uh, add in a little bit okay to create okay uh, the two XMB. okay say example the two path here if you clean your uh, two over here okay you see that it hit your holder actually hit on the part okay by using the report okay it will give you the 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 value okay this value you can actually uh record them and then you can put in 50 or 48 right it will be enough clearance so this one is the shortest so once i select the two i change okay uh, this length is 28 and the shank is 10 so it's only 30, uh, 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 38 so not enough so i change it to 48 38 plus 10 48 then uh, you will have enough allowance for your two currents. So when I click over here, okay, you see there will be enough currents here. Okay, so you do not need to try an error, right? You try probably uh, uh, 30, 40 first, then uh, it, it will be troublesome, right? It will, it will actually waste your time. Okay, okay, next is on the uh, non-cutting uh, move, all right? 
for the non-cutting move, original, okay, uh, especially for the rest meal, uh, okay, initially for some of the command, okay, you already have this move uh, smoothing. Okay, but for the rest milling, we are still using okay uh, the regular trans transition. Okay, for uh, if you turn on the smooth transition, okay, it will be a smooth uh, movement. But the thing is, for smooth uh, command, okay, you will need to change this okay to cutting feed rate, right? So uh, make sure you also change instead of using G zero, okay, uh, rapid, okay, rapid, you will see uh. The movement not so smooth okay so you have to change it to uh g1 but you can increase that put it to maybe three thousand four thousand make it faster okay so it will because this is a non-cutting move right so you can uh, uh, put it higher okay so it's over here okay i have one example here uh for the video then all you need to do is to turn on the smooth engage Okay, and it will generate the program. Okay, on okay, next one, okay, is the uh, uh, process patterning. Okay, when we copy a pattern, okay, we actually okay, uh, need to generate them and it will consume a lot of memory. Okay, some case we probably need to uh, wait 20, 30 minutes. Uh, if a very complex profile, probably you will uh, have to generate. Okay, uh, uh, generate. It will take very long time to generate. Okay, so with this uh, new command, okay, it actually can uh, save you a lot of time. Okay, by turning on the feature, actually, it will uh, actually capture, okay, uh, only, okay, the the first uh, generate okay the rest of it okay it will uh, copy okay uh, based on the pattern you have okay so it is the video okay notice if you have uh, a lot of program so all of this is you need to generate like right? uh, copy the uh, pattern it will okay it will be very messy uh, when you see the program a lot a lot is there so what you need to do is you click and then select the pattern feature. Okay, it will it will not show in this program, but you have the full path. Okay, you can select display. Okay, display pattern and it will list out the uh, the program. So with this, okay, it will be uh very time. Uh, uh, it will not it will save you a lot of time. Okay, uh, by doing this. Even if you change on the model, okay, it will actually automatically update on the program itself. Okay, even if you change the model, design model, okay, it will update. But this have to be the, the pattern have to be done in MX. Okay, in order okay for the uh, patterning to 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 work. If you if you if you are using it on a step file or other file, okay, you can use the conventional method, but it will take longer, right? So this one, uh, the traditional traditional way, okay, uh, uh, uh similar part probably for this case, uh, this is a real, real case study, okay, take three hour, okay, to generate the two part, okay, each cavity, then the roughing, uh, rest milling, finishing, all right, all, all of this, okay, uh, actually take very long time to generate, uh, right, because the profile is three D. Then, uh, if you use in instancing, that's one instancing uh, command in the uh, NX, okay, where it will take slightly better, right, two, two and a half hour, okay, then, but still you need the IPW and then all, all of this, okay, to generate. Okay, with the new new command, okay, it probably uh, takes only 20 minutes, okay, just to generate two parts. So if, uh, if some small changes, like right, you don't have to go through again, uh, one changes, uh, I have to wait a long time to generate. And it, it, it will affect, especially when you use uh, IPW. Okay, so this is a chart uh, of uh, time saving you can do, right? When each upgrade, we try to uh, improve where you as much as you can to save your time in programming and uh, yeah, uh, 
uh, the speed 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 you can uh, uh, do your machining. All right, so this number of operation, okay. Uh, before that, we have to click a lot of click, right? So three hundred, then so we okay. Uh, go big to less than fifty. Again, then the time also uh improve, and then the mouse click is uh also lower. Okay, so uh here's uh, another example of the video, okay, where you can uh we, we uh, i can show okay not only on one pattern okay just now we we are using uh one pattern to for this direction for this one we have uh, one type of pattern on this side and then another one over here and then other on the whole okay so what you do is you can separate this right instead of using all of these okay you can use uh, select one of them and then okay display and then it will copy only on seven right this side okay then on the small profile okay maybe we have a finishing okay only on this side this side we only need to do uh more finishing so we will only copy this direction okay so it will generate Okay, see, once I click, okay, uh, once uh, the system click it, okay, uh, it only take okay, a few few minutes actually to uh, create, okay, the display. So when you come to uh, creating the program, okay, it will actually, small changes, okay, you do not need to uh, generate the whole thing. Oh, this one is, is especially useful uh, if you have a lot of pattern profile uh, where you have a lot of different different uh, different profile to co uh, copy this okay. then if you happen to change in your program right okay you have a change in your program okay you can actually click on the pattern and change the value okay this one i'm using 13 and then the pitch distance uh, 21 okay so once you change it immediately okay it will create the profile as well as and the programming will be updated itself okay so the programming is there So for programming over here also, I will change another, the second profile instead of uh, over here. Okay, we change it to uh, then 13, 21. See, it will not uh, be like, okay, if we were to generate the, the, the one we are using, okay, regularly, probably uh, we, we need to have a copy first, right? So a lot of time is waste uh, during generic multi profile, especially three D three D model like that. Right? Okay, last one. I show some example. Thing. you can just uh, remove the hole if you do not need it okay, okay next is a uh, two display toggle okay i think uh, for older version like okay remember when we use the uh, verified tool to run our program okay we have to stop nearby and then run re sometimes we want it fast but sometimes we want it slow so we have to position it very nicely to move but today this you don't need to uh, worry so much about uh, running the two path you can click on that two path itself and then the two will be there 
Okay, this one is okay, a uh, very powerful tool. Okay, say example olden. Okay, uh, the olden time. Okay, we have to run a simulation in order to see the two path. Okay. Okay, over here you can just click on the display two path. Okay, and click on the two path itself. You can stop any way you want. Okay, last time it will only stop at let's say uh you have a straight line. Right? Let's say you have a straight line. It will have to stop from the front okay and the end so you, you cannot stop in between so you have to run the program very slowly okay in order to see whether uh, the cutting is correct or not but today touching on the two path any way you want okay is possible okay just like that okay you click on it and then the two path in there okay you can use this to measure as well and then zoom it will take right everything Okay, can be done with this two uh two display. You can also create an IPW without going into the verify two path, and then you start to play, and then you will have a three three D mod uh a verification without going into the older older command. I know the older command is smaller icon now, so it's hidden somewhere. Okay, so the two animation okay will be there okay to uh. To, to select so this one become bigger okay while the uh, the two two verification last time used to be a big command right so it's, it's, it's probably hidden uh, elsewhere but you can okay customize this icon right? the reason for this is because we have this new command and then display the two path and then click on any way we want to Okay, next to uh the there's an improvement in Gauss check. When we do the Gauss check last time, we have only a text form. But today, okay, the Gauss check will be in uh uh what what you call it the uh, the, uh an interface uh dialog right okay. Okay, over here I'll have an example of the video. Okay, that's uh the you you when you generate okay uh your Gauss check okay it will list out accordingly okay where they will have a collision or a Gauss check okay where you need to uh, emphasize that. Okay, on top of that, not only you can uh, only show all of it, you can click on that particular two path and then select only that two path. Okay, then you can see maybe some of changes you can do. And then you can also turn on only the Gauss check area with problem. Okay, then you select. Okay, there's three area here. Okay, where you can click directly on the two path. Okay, you can select all or just specific area you want to check. So you can click directly on uh, that particular Gauss check. Previously, if you remember, okay, when you do the Gauss check only, they will show you uh, the text form, right? So uh, today, okay, it's a uh, different, okay, interface. Okay, you can also run, okay, uh, next next program, okay, to see, okay, the two path will be there. So you can run next, okay, to run the two path itself. I see any changes you can do to the programming. Okay, uh, next, okay, I'll go into uh, adaptive milling. Okay, uh, adaptive milling, okay, started in uh, NX12. Okay, so it's, uh, I think, uh, I think because previously we have shown uh, quite quite a lot. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, now, okay, on top of adaptive milling, okay, we also, uh, 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 for the adaptive milling, we are able to use a chamfer too. Okay, so uh, a lot of uh, customer will uh, require uh, will have request us to uh, whether we can use uh, chamfer tool to do this uh, adaptive milling. Okay, but now today, okay, uh, in the new version, okay, we are able to do so. Right. Okay. Also on adaptive milling, okay, uh, we are able to support uh multi training. Okay, previously when we, uh, I think on version. Trough, okay, uh, onward, okay. Most of the command 
is able to support uh, multi trading. Okay, multi trading. Okay, means if you have a few processor, okay, it actually can uh, generally it, uh, uh, make full use of the uh, core you have in your system. Okay, so this is an example. Okay, first, okay, we will run the normal, then we run the uh, core with the core or processor. So you see, starting probably you will see, okay, uh, the one core running factor. But after that, okay, when uh, uh, the uh, multi-core start, okay, it will finish it faster at 15 seconds. Okay, while the other one will be still running. So this one probably will take longer time to finish. Okay, for your all the operation, okay, cavity mill, okay, I think uh, for the few version back, okay, is already able to support, but not all the command, okay, some of the command in there, but today, nearly all of it, okay, is able to support multi trading. Okay, even on adaptive milling, we are able to uh, use the multi trading. Okay, so you do not have to waste a lot of time, okay, in uh, generating your program. Okay, then we're going to uh, delivering. Okay, chamfer, uh, the chamfer, right? Okay, has, has been one of the uh, command, like right? the complaints, especially from our the, the user and then uh, other competitor use this uh, to attack us. But this is no longer the case. Uh. Okay, for NX, uh, delivering today, okay, is very powerful. Okay, so I have one uh, review here. Okay, first, okay, we this programming is done in NX12. Okay, you see the selection and click, and then this is fast forward, fast forward uh, selection. Okay, probably you uh, for all the chamfering that you need to do, maybe you have to waste, I think for this case, it's 20 over minute. It's still doing that. All right, so it's 20 minutes, 700 over uh, mouse click and 15 operation to do this chamfering for this profile. Okay, with the new command, okay, we will select the chamfering. Okay, all you need to do is how deep you want your chamfer to be and uh, what's the size of the chamfer. Click. Okay. Uh, okay. You need to change the fill rate. Or oh, okay, the English. All right. You just select on the generate, and then the two path is there. Okay. Notice the big difference. Uh. One is 20 minutes and the other is 42 seconds. So imagine how much time you can save. So that's why the the complaint is there for a reason last time. Okay, uh, so uh, this is very powerful, eh? especially we've been working on uh, with, with our customer uh, about the complaint for this, this uh, chamfering. Okay, next is uh, the enhancement for the bounding block. Okay, uh, for bounding block, okay, uh, this time, okay, we can inherit, uh, let's say, uh, a standard size, uh, 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 one that we can put in in the design uh, attribute, and then it, it can inherit, and then it can, even if you do it on cam itself, again, you can export the, create the block itself. So here I have an example of the video. Okay, so uh, when I select on the mounting block, okay, I can inherit the okay, uh, data. So the, the, the standard data, okay, maybe from 200. Uh, then from that also, I can uh, create the size. Uh. So this is the attribute, okay, we can we create, we have create, okay, maybe from Move Wizard or somewhere, right? So we can also input the, the allowance, okay, for machining. Okay, so once we generate, okay, we can create a, a, a design part uh, addition. Let's say if I click on the block, okay, by default it's empty. 
you can create one additional component blank here. Okay, without going into design. Okay, you can create it in assembly or normal uh, parts. Okay, so uh, there's an option uh, before here. Okay, where you can. Okay, notice here, you can choose between the assembly or the component. Okay, for this, okay, we want the component. Next, okay, uh, for the flow, okay, uh, uh, multi-flow, and then all this, we, it, the system has been constantly improving uh, all the two parts, every time, uh, because the profile, uh, after the profile, okay, get complex, uh, okay, this has been, uh, okay, uh, improving uh, from, 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 even from the older version until today, it's still improving, okay, uh, in, in time to come, right, so, uh, do not worry about your, uh, because sometimes, right, Okay, uh, this okay uh, is the old behavior. Okay, some of the line okay it will not uh create a two path. Okay. So for the new version okay it will improve okay the movement as well as the the area to uh to uh create the flow flow meaning. Okay, especially uh for the okay multi multi uh flow milling. Okay, the improvement is on, okay, uh, especially on the multi, yeah, because we have changed the two part. Last time is the intercept, okay. So now we are using the, what we call it, the race tag, right? Race tag, okay, will improve the movement. So you will not see a lot of intersection, okay. On this drawing, okay, you see, compare the difference between uh, the race tag and then the, uh, intersection so intersection sometimes you will have uh, a lot of uh, area where you run it again and again and again so the race race track okay will try to improve this okay okay for for the subsequent version also okay as as much as they realize okay uh when we report to the GTEC of the two path not so uh, proper okay it will be improved Okay, so for the flow meaning as well, also, uh, it has been okay created okay the uh, very very superior to many cat system. Okay, so today it's very reliable. We just I can just use the reference tool okay to run okay without using the three D uh, capturing two D actually you can actually uh, capture the reference tool path quite reliably nowadays. Uh, without having 3d also we can do that right? you see last time okay some of the area is not uh, uh properly created uh, for the reference to okay now today okay it will actually create more of a two part okay next okay i will go into uh five axis roughing okay okay so uh before that, okay, we have been using a uh, three axis roughing, and then we have to slowly uh, tip our angle to create a. Okay, let's say this this is a profile, so we have to uh, create a few angle to make sure it it can reach the bottom of the surface. Okay, so but today, okay, we we have created this uh, five axis roughing command where it makes use of the five axis machine. Okay, if you are able to run simultaneous, okay, using the simultaneous. To create a nice profile for the floor, okay, to do the finishing immediately. We do not need to do a lot of touch up and then uh, here and there, okay. So it will save a lot of time uh, doing this. Okay, this leverage on your uh, uh, full five axis capability of a CNC machine, okay. So you can use uh, high speed machining, okay, for your five axis adaptive milling. Okay, instead of using the flat surface and stop there, and then the bottom, you have to find a way to remove the material. But for this five axis, you can uh, create the program from top until the end. Okay, here is one of the example uh, with real uh, case study, right? So this is an adaptive milling. Okay, not ordinary five axis uh, roughing. Uh. So is you see uh, adaptive? When I talk about adaptive, okay, is uh, the whole fluid is cutting. Okay, so I play this again. Okay, you will notice that it will cut the whole uh cut the cutting thickness for the whole entire flute. 
Maybe it's a real case uh, cutting. Okay, we have another example. This one uh, is cutting on titanium, right? Ti6A, uh, I, for me. Or even on titanium, uh, it will works also for the uh, adaptive cutting. So you see, the floor is very nice already. So your once your roughing is uh, good, okay, your finishing will not need to have uh, a lot of thing to control. You don't have to do a lot of uh, semi again. Okay, in fact, this roughing itself, uh, you can immediately go into finishing. Okay. Okay, so uh, two trays, okay, uh, this, okay, uh, is very useful, okay, because uh, now five axis, uh, sometimes we do not want the cutter to move too much, uh. okay, uh, okay, some machine is able to move uh, as much as, uh, uh, okay, uh, as much as you want, uh, some machine, okay, uh, because uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, different uh, grading for the machine, we try to control it, the uh, minimum uh, movement, so you, ha you can have a uh, better two path so for two trace is able to do that okay when you can uh, capture every movement of the two axis uh, so you can see whether it's straight or not okay so here the example okay when i click on the two path okay uh, and turn on the trace two axis okay it actually capture okay you see it will capture the line so we can actually play it and you can see whether it move uh, nicely or not if there's two two uh if the two axis is not uh very aligned uh, suddenly it can turn too much uh, it's not good for five axis uh, right? some machine cannot take it and some of you probably can okay so you can increase the length of this uh, two tracing to see to give you a better view the next uh command okay i want to highlight here is uh, interpolate okay for five axis uh, we rely a lot on either we have to have a reference for the two to follow so most of the time we are using a point some of the time we are using line so when we use a line, right, we cannot control other things. Okay, we interpolate, okay, uh, a long axis, and then we have an interpolate uh, parametric. Okay, this, okay, will allow us to control our two path very easily. Okay, so over here, uh, let's say I have a, okay, I have a profile here. Okay, this one, okay, uh, especially it's useful if you are doing a, uh, but for oil and gas, okay, most of the time you you are doing car uh, car But landing gear, okay, most of uh, some of uh, landing gear, uh, you have to uh, uh, as a especially in aerospace industry, uh, okay, landing gear you uh, probably need to do your laughing yourself, uh, right? So then you have to if let's say this area you need to do finishing, okay, to control the fire axis is uh, somehow important, okay. So uh, here, okay, let's say uh, I will run a, a program here. You see the two path will be okay based on the line okay so we will have a straight line here it will capture from this line so you can only control based on the line when reach over here you see here we do not have enough allowance so if to control this one uh sometimes we have to create another profile surface and then uh, very troublesome so your your design have to be good also uh, and then a lot of things need to be done last time to control this okay but with the interpolate okay uh we can easily control the two path over here i'll change to interpolate around axis so axis still the same okay we are using the uh, y axis for this case okay it's the same as the command before using the axis to control but this time okay we will use a point to define okay first okay we will put in 
the original uh, two two position. Okay, so we make sure it is straight. Okay, I don't change anything. I make sure it's straight. Then I add, add another one, and then this time I will control. Okay, the two path I want is slant. So during this point is straight. So from straight until here, it was slowly slant to this position. Okay, so when I generate, okay, you will see the two path. Uh, initially, it will follow the axis. Once you reach the point that I select slanting, okay, it will start to slant. So once it's done, okay, then uh, it will create a position based on the axis. But over here, okay, I will it is still uh, touching on the two. So you can create a report collision generate, okay, and it will capture the two gauge gauge here, okay, where uh, it will detect collision. Okay, so what I do is the slanting is not enough. Okay, maybe I want to uh, move it, create the angle even bigger. So I generate. Okay, so you see now the two path uh, is clear, right? So we no longer uh, 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 have any collision. Okay, so with, with the interpolate, it's actually very easy to control, okay, for especially for the uh, uh, y axis, right? If you want to control based on the axis, right? And then you need to stun a bit, then uh, this will be very useful. Okay, next is to uh, use parametric uh, interpolate. Also on interpolate, right? Okay, for interpolate, we can have uh, one is along and then one is across. Okay, so uh, I will start with uh, along the drive. Okay, where this one also the same thing. You see, you have four points where you can adjust it any angle you want. Okay, so you will see your cutter move according to the uh, two path that we create. Okay, so uh, first, okay, the guide curve, I use this one. Okay, uh, just now, okay, we are using this as the guide curve. Okay, over here is another, uh, this side for the guide curve. So you create, and then you can create the pump. All right, so uh, this is a powerful uh, enhancement right, uh, in the new command. Okay, next, okay, is uh, barrel two. Okay, uh, even with, uh, okay, in NX, okay, uh, uh, 19 series, okay, uh, we are able to support uh, barrel two. Okay, why do we need to use barrel two? Okay, the reason is because uh, simulta uh, simultaneous, okay, uh, we cannot create some profile uh, that is too complex, right? Then on top of that, if we need to do pitching, it will be very time consuming. Okay, over here, I have a chart, right? So this profile, Okay, by using ball nose, right? using uh, uh, pitching to do, we need about 40 minutes to create a very nice profile. Okay, then we use a barrel tool. Okay, we run the step over. Okay, for step over of this, okay, we run 1.2. Then we do it a lot bigger. So let's say at 8 mm here, okay, uh, for the depth of cut, right, the step over. Okay, we only need a 28 second to create this profile. Okay, but this profile look uh, not so nice, but you can use it. Okay, if you have to control between your step over and the timing. Okay, smaller step over, you will have nicer profile. Okay, but uh, <clears throat> longer timing. So I re we reduce it to finishing. Okay, the profile become nicer already. So over here, the step over is 4 mm. 
and then the machining time is one minute and 20. Then we can do it super finishing even nicer okay instead of using one okay we can double it to 2.25 okay so over here we only need three minutes and 37 seconds okay to create the profile okay the result okay will be uh similar all right to what we can achieve here okay so this is the uh one of the uh real real uh, uh example okay you see the chip right so instead of using small you have a profile barrier right that can uh create a, a better surface finishing okay for this one you will need uh uh, uh five axis okay to run this profile if you use three axis okay but uh you cannot capture the actual tangency right by using five axis uh, five axis you can uh get the uh, tendential okay of the profile this is another uh, example okay this is the uh adaptive really uh opening the profile okay then the semi finishing okay then over here uh, this is a barrel cutting using a uh, five axis tangent shirt to the profile to create the five axis uh, finishing so you don't have to use the pitching uh, olden time right you need to pitch it slowly right to create the profile so by using this uh, uh it will save you a lot of time uh. for those uh, customers that is uh, doing part machining especially when you every every part is money so if you can run run every part as uh, uh, uh faster you mean more money for you right you can actually a uh, small call a uh, small investment but the return will be very big i see the movement uh, this is a simultaneous uh, movement reason why you need to move that much uh, is because it has to be tangential uh, to the profile you have because this profile may be too complex to do a uh, simultaneous so we have to use the uh simultaneous movement right, to create the profile complex profile like this okay so uh i go into the next one is to merge two uh five axis command okay so you can actually why is the reason that we need to merge two uh, two two paths together okay let's say if we run the first path even it's the same two right for the olden time right the two tend to return for five axis uh, we have this safety command uh, that we have to return to a uh, home position then we go back again so what happens if, if you merge these two together right it actually create a program based on these two and then you don't have to return to the original position so this one will allow you to uh, save time instead of uh, uh, going back to the home first and then come back right so this one will allow you to run the pro program also control it uh, to the way you want right later i will show you the video here okay so two two path combined to one okay you see the two path okay uh start it come over here and then it move and then it return okay okay you see the cutter will move and then it will move along this okay it will combine these two path two path together so you will not have first two path uh, uh finish and then return home and then come back again and then uh to do another let's say we have one finishing and, and roughing a uh, semi and then one finishing so these two path will will be uh on the part okay once it's done then it return to the home okay you will not separate into two program okay notice you have uh, you, you will do one uh, roughing then one finishing 
Okay, see, we have one uh, semi-finishing and then another is finishing. Okay, you can combine also two, two, three profile into one. Okay, the command is in the uh, multi-axis, uh, the program, create program. Okay, you will see this command here. Okay, it will allow on four or five axis command, uh, variable cutting, okay, uh, uh, turbo machineries, okay, uh, 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 command, okay. So most of the five axis, okay, uh, you can use this, okay, to combine two, two parts together. But we condition that two, two have to be the same. If it's a different two, you cannot combine together. You have to go home as well because you need to change the two, right? So it's no point using the different, uh, different two to combine. Edwin, now got one person asking: This work okay. for five axis only? Uh, for five axis only. But three axis, uh, we don't return home. Uh, three axis, okay. Three axis, uh, uh, we will go up, and then uh, at the moment it's only for five axis. Uh, this one. Because we, we forecast, okay, well, five axis when you return, right, uh, is for safety purpose. Uh. And for this case, it's same, same, same uh, axis, uh, Z axis, but uh, we combine two together. But if you have a different axis, uh, try not to use this one. Uh, it's very dangerous. Uh, too, too much, uh, but some, some cases can. Uh, some cases you can. We, we have tried some cases, it's able to do so. Okay. Okay, I hope I answered that. Okay, I continue first. So if, you have, if you have any uh, other question, okay, you can continue and then I will answer. Okay. Okay, so uh, there's, there's two different uh, order, right? So this one by control count is you want it create it by uh, the side. Okay. So I will do one semi first, then I go into finishing. You see, the two paths combined together, it will not run the semi first complete, then they will do the finishing. This system is smart enough to capture one, two, they take one, two path from the semi finishing, then another two path from finishing. So they can actually uh, combine together, but you run one semi finishing, semi finishing, semi finishing. So you will take one from here, one from here. So is that uh, smart for this one? Okay, next is a non-cutting move. Okay, where you will move out. Okay, uh, you can control it, right? Uh, the non-cutting move. Okay, over here you see. Uh, once you cut uh, semi first, then it will cut finishing. Semi finishing. Okay, for some of the case, right, when you do finishing, you say uh, too, too much material. So some of the time, right, we want to complete the semi first, then we do the finishing. So what happened here, you have additional command, okay, where you can do length, okay. The second command, okay, I want to do semi first for two or three cut. So the finishing, okay, will start only probably on second cut, right. Second cut, then it will start the finishing. Okay, so in this case, okay, uh, because you cannot complete semi first, then uh, finishing. Because some profile, okay, later on when we have a blade, right, you will see the reason why we don't want to cut it, complete the semi first, then we do the finishing. So we cut probably two or three cut of uh, semi first, then we do the finishing. Okay, so this is the non-cutting two bar. Okay, so over here I will have a uh, uh, two. Then this one is left behind. It start from uh, the uh, second one after it, it create the two part first. One, two, three. Okay, you can control it with this one. Maybe you run two two part first, then you start the finishing. Okay, the reason for this one is probably this one you can do finishing first, but especially for the blade here. 
you cannot complete everything first because it will be uh, because this one very thin it will vibrate so you tend to uh, create wrapping and of semi then finishing semi finishing uh, if you cut like that okay this one is full 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 blade la. so at the bottom uh, sometimes we scared that it become uh, no more support it will vibrate la. so over here we will cut one level and then finishing one level and then finishing so this one will minimize la. i would say not uh, won't be 100 percent, but it minimize the vibration And we will have uh, the finishing uh, taking place. Okay, for this profile, okay, we can do it from start until end. For sometimes too many profile, uh, it's better you create one profile here, a second profile here, and then third profile. Some of the time we need to do that, okay. But when you do that, uh, imagine if it's a five axis command, uh, you have to go back and then come back again, go back to the home and then come back again. So by com uh, combine, combine we will use uh, by concert nation right so uh, it will combine the two paths together okay to combine we use this one if we want to control the two path uh, semi finishing we use the other command so uh, this will be a much uh, common so uh, one more example okay uh, on that one so uh because this profile uh very com uh that's why i, I, I would say sometimes corporate if you combine together very hard to control too far so you separate it out by separate out it will go in and out in and out so what you do is you want to combine together okay you can use the mesh command you just create the mesh and throw this program inside and generate then uh you will create a mesh program So you create the mesh inside here, okay. Then you throw the program inside, okay. My concatenation. You need to generate it, and then it will combine together. It's too far. Immediately, it will go into another portal. Once you reach this area, and then it will go into another portal. So it's better to separate that. So some profile is when you generate program, right, it's better to separate it in order to get a nice two path. Okay, for rotary roughing, uh, uh, older command, uh, I think most of us throw away uh, this command. Okay, for the older version, because we can only run on, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, 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 radius cutter. Bull, even bull knows when we want to do roughing, also we cannot do it. You know. So, but today it's different slowly. Okay, so the rotary command has been uh, uh, modified and is very powerful now that it can support flat mill. Okay. For the version uh, 19 series, you are able, okay, especially if you are doing those, uh, uh, five axis uh, uh, landing gear where it's titanium. Okay, I, I saw the couple of uh, inquire, uh, requirement uh, for landing gear last time use uh, two parts like that. They were asking about how to do it. Last time, very difficult to do this uh, programming. Okay, but with this command already, I uh, I think everyone can, it's not, not difficult to do it anymore. Okay, so uh, the example is even with the con also, is able to uh, create a program okay so uh, we will start with a cylindrical okay so you can you can see see you can support bomb bomb uh, ball bull nose and flat okay over here okay uh, i will define the axis you just need to define the axis for programming and then select the uh, i think this is uh, the common cavity mill command okay that we have right 
So last time roughing, okay, for this one, okay, we have to use variable, but still very hard to control during that time, but not, not that easy. But with this command, okay, it, the port axis roughing become very easy. Okay, so you based on the uh, IPW, okay, uh, and then capture. You see the profile, you will follow and create the profile here. Then you can create a pocket and you create pocket inside. Okay, we can control the floor, okay, whether we touch depth of cut or the range, okay, can be select. Okay, so uh, if you want it, okay, uh, then you can create, okay, uh, you don't want to touch the floor, you want the finishing cutter to do it, then you input a uh, distance. Okay, the distance is based on the depth of cut. Now. So 85, it will be start from here, 85%, okay, uh, minimum, okay, so you will have a distance, okay, a roughing distance over here. So 85% of uh, one inch, so you will stop there, maybe you want to do it on another operation okay you can also control the range uh, this one okay will be most like the turning operation where you can control radio where you want to stop you want to stop uh here maybe other operation to do it you can stop okay start at which distance stop at which distance okay Oh yeah, half, half of it. Okay, I don't want. Okay, I use Excel to do it. Radio will be the radius, right? The radius. Then you can control both of it together as well. So this is uh, Excel. Okay, you can stop maybe here below. Okay, probably you want to do turning or maybe in front you do turning uh, and behind you use uh, the milling to do it. Uh, so it's uh, your process that work on that. Okay, the two path also uh, you can control, right? So you can have a corner smoothness, right? This one is sharp and then you have, have corner where you can run faster on the two path for roughing. Okay, that okay. Uh, for roughing, most of the time, okay, we will do the depth first, and uh, then we do the no, sorry, we do the level first, uh, because we want to make sure this level is complete. Then we do the next uh, level. So most of the roughing operation, we do level first. Okay, finishing, we will do the depth first. Uh. Okay, for profile more complex like that, okay, probably we want to add in cut between area, okay, to create a nicer profile. Okay, so uh, then our semi will not be, uh, we, we don't have to do more semi over here. Okay, for the con profile, okay, conical, okay, uh, parts, uh, imperial, okay, it can do the roughing already, okay. So all you need to do is you select on the conical, okay, and tell the system what angle is this. the angle will be calculated based on the center axis right if you select z okay it will be based on z and then how many degree okay nine degree then you can easily create a profile this one is in the uh, uh, rotary command so you can use this to do it without having uh, the impeller, impeller, the turbo machinery module. So but for this only, uh, the rest of it, okay, you will still need the turbo machinery module. <laughs> okay, multi-axis deburring. When we talk about deburring on three axis, okay, now five axis can also do uh, deburring. Okay, so when, when uh, over here, Okay, we will see one three axis, okay, and uh, four axis, and then five axis. Three axis, it will fix in one axis, and then uh, the four axis will be uh, rotary uh, on the rotary table, and then there's a uh, five axis.
Okay, so for five exit simultaneous, okay, uh, will be very very easy because you have freedom to move. Uh, next is, is you you do not need to uh, what call it over the uh, the 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 axis limit. Then will do lah. Then for four, it will control it into one axis. Then you can also control four axis. You fix one axis here. Okay, uh, so uh, fit in one axis, but fix it. Fix the tip, okay? Because some machine is only four plus one, so you can fix one axis and then run the simultaneous for four axis. Okay, it's doable. Okay, next is on three axis. Okay, some three axis. Okay, we can fix the point, right? So uh, it, it will not uh, rotate. So there's a three axis plus two, right? So it means you still can rotate, but it have to rotate first, then it picks in one direction, then it will start cutting. So it cannot be simultaneous on this three plus two. Okay, so uh, I will show you okay, so an example here. Okay, three plus two means okay. Three axis is fixed. Okay, uh, very straightforward. Your z axis whichever it will go into z. Okay, three plus two. Okay, it will rotate now. Nah. Okay, over here it will cut based on this axis, and then over here it will cut based on this. Then uh, it will follow the profile, right? But it will rotate first, then it cut. But once it cutting, it will not move. Nah. Okay, so you will fix on uh, one of axis. Okay, the reason why this one move, uh, uh, because at the bottom here, uh, it try to avoid the, is it, try to avoid the two uh, holder, right? So by right, okay, it, should, it, should, uh, it, it will not move uh, when you put in fix. Okay, then the blank uh, spine, okay, is to move, okay, uh, during this uh, movement, right? The non 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 English uh, not non cutting movement. Okay, so uh, this the plane. Okay, this one is the same as uh, previous version. Okay, you can have a relief, uh, so it will move out a bit first, okay, before you okay, over here, okay, you will see that here engage, uh, so you will have a relief. Uh, uh. Okay, you because uh, all these are uh, detect based on automatic age, unless you select the age yourself, uh, right, then it will detect. You can also detect it based on type. Let's say over here, I select the axis here, I define this is the start point, and then end point is here. So you will only calculate the ages for this area only. The rest of our area, okay, you will not you will not create the profile. You see, only on this surface, right? Based on the top Z line right? and then until the bottom here. Okay, the rest of it, the bottom one, you will not capture. Okay, so uh I think this is one of a very powerful okay uh, uh command right okay so uh that's all okay from uh my side for the uh new new command of course uh because okay there's uh many of the uh like this morning child have shared okay if you go into the uh what's new version right you can let's say if you create okay you want to see maybe from trial for new uh uh, 1926 or whichever version uh, you want to see i can click on it and then you can select on type of thing you want to see like the manufacturing okay additive manufacturing is in there okay you can browse to okay what is new inside okay i will usually what we do is okay uh because there's so many of it <laughs> if we were to cover all of it uh, i think probably uh it will takes probably uh a few days uh, but okay, uh, we will focus on the important one, right? Uh, the one that is uh, 
very uh, very sp uh, special. Okay, then we will highlight. Right? So, okay, next is to uh, I want to share. Okay, uh, with you the uh, case study. Okay, that we have done now. Uh, okay, maybe some sharing. Okay, for we if you like uh, the the case study that we have done to our customer will be useful. Okay, for the camp site. Uh. Okay, the uh, post processor customization. Okay, we actually uh, have been customized uh, uh, our post processor to the uh, to fit customer needs, right? So why do we need the uh, good post processor? Okay, because of course you can use your hand to change this profile, and uh, okay, you can use your text uh, you create. Okay, but if you can change it uh, to minimize changes, uh, the chances of human error is lower. Okay, so we actually uh, have been creating okay Milton uh, post processor, especially okay things like uh. uh uh, Milton command uh, C axis okay using Planner Mill to create this uh, C axis programming okay we have we have also done okay previously maybe we will need to use manual key or to create them so uh, now okay by using uh, a good post processor right where you minimize changes okay will help you to okay of course changes okay you can do that but Think of if you do it a lot of job, right? Changing something, okay, too many times, right? Uh, every human will make, right? So it's good, okay, to have a, a, a good post, post processor. Okay, over here, okay, we will customize the post accordingly, okay? Even we will list out the Z axis, okay, type of tool that you use. Okay, machining time, okay, to roughly give you an idea how long, okay, uh, uh, this, uh, whole cycle is okay then uh we can also uh create okay the travel distance how much okay the travel distance is and then the uh, yeah especially the tool lah. so make sure when the machine is set up okay make sure the tool is long enough lah, over here okay so we will go down 20 so make sure it's 22 or 23 lah. so something bigger lah. Okay, then uh, if you have uh, other information that uh, like the revision, like the programming, right, that you need customize, okay, we can actually put it into the program. Okay, so uh, it will help a lot, okay, instead of uh, engineer use all the time, okay, to do a lot of paperwork, okay. If you can customize your post processor to fit the company needs, okay, it actually help a lot, okay. For first case, okay, if you want to uh, create a start point, right? sometimes, okay, safety point, you want to create this, okay, you can use the post processor to control them, okay. Some checking is important, right, so that's why we will need to have, uh, okay, instead of using, okay, we can, we can okay, of course, uh, you use uh, your, your, your own text to put in the safety point there, but with the post processor, okay, uh, to do it okay the next person to do it they don't have to think about right, what i should need to put into the post processor okay the person that post from that uh carry on posting the program okay will just post up and then use immediately okay over here for the oil and gas okay they will use uh, regularly on looping okay for looping okay if you can input it uh, yourself, but if you can use your post processor to input this looping inside, you don't, every time you post it, the looping is there. You don't have to uh, okay, add in later on. Uh, so the human error, like, like I mentioned just now, okay, the human error will be reduced. Uh, okay, if you can customize the post processor correctly. Okay, so uh, let's see sure. Okay, show the arrow fee, uh, G code and M code, uh, smooth up your communication uh, between the programmer and machinist. Okay, maximize your machine capability. Okay, this one also speed up the G code. Okay, program delivery delivery time. Okay, to stop for, and then a uh, user friendly G code program uh, for machining. Uh, okay, so you don't have to have a. Uh, uh, one very very experienced G code uh, user, so you know where to put it inside the program. Okay, at least you can focus.
focus more on programming, okay, instead of just uh, no where to put in on the G code. Okay, another case study, okay, uh, I want to share, okay, will be on probe, right? So uh, for probe, okay, uh, we have one case, okay, where we, we there's a, it, it doesn't matter if you have Renaissance or Brum, okay, uh, you can use it, okay, and then we can actually, uh, one case study here, we are using uh, Renaissance. Okay, so we actually uh, create a probe right, to do sometime, okay, when we need the human to measure uh, uh, the parts. Uh. Okay, so we can actually program the probing inside NX and then just post it. And then uh, the machinist will only have to uh, take note of the tool. And then when come to probing, okay, it will take care of the dimension itself. So over here, okay, first is the datum setting. Okay, we can customize, okay, roughly, okay, let's say if you have a size around, okay, one size, you can actually probe it and get the center G54 uh, coordinate. Okay, so we will touch on this side and then another side. Okay, then we will get the Y, oh, no, sorry, X axis, and this is the Y axis. Okay, then the Z. So we will have the, okay, immediately G54 coordinate. Okay, by using the probe. Okay, we actually input this uh, probe program inside NX. Okay, so let's say example, we finish uh, the, the boss. Uh. So we need to measure it. So you can use the probe to measure it. Okay, then you run the probe program inside NX also. You don't have to, okay, uh, uh, some, some of the cases when we can uh, create the probe program outside, but it will be very troublesome, right? This program, we have to fit it inside. That's why I say, when you do a post processor, if you just fit your 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 other probing program in between that, you probably might make a mistake. But if you, the program is inside your NX program, so you feel free to post your program out immediately. You don't have to worry right, or where to fit in my probe program. So this programming is done inside NX. So once it's finished, you see the machining here. So the probe will, will measure the part. So see if it's uh, maybe uh, 20 micron uh, uh, bigger. So the next cutting, okay, will be minus 20. So it will immediately go into machine and then and do the offset. So now we will create a program and do the finishing. Okay, then the probe will come in to measure again. Okay. And the uh, last will be angular, even on angular position, right? So if you were to measure, because annex you use program to do it now. Okay, you can also use angular to measure as well. Okay, you see the position is angular. It's not straight, no, right? So uh, if you were to do programming at angular, uh, it's not, you, your calculation must be very good. Uh, right? Okay, so this one will reduce the uh, work setup time uh, uh, more than 50%, right? And I say, then your, your, your machinist, okay, will have more time, okay, uh, to do other things, uh, right? So especially, okay, you, you you might say, okay, this one will take over the machinist job, but it's not true, right? So because uh, imagine if you are doing production, uh, consistency is important. So if let's say if your engineer, okay, might get tired, if wrong, wrong okay. So this uh, measure measure thing right, will help you to take care. Even sometimes you measure the wrong one, uh, then the input is by human. Okay, sometimes you input, no matter how accurate you are, okay, if probably if too tired, the input, maybe uh, not correct. So uh, they can focus more on other other thing. Okay, so uh, it's also reduce scrap, okay? So uh, scrap is important, right? This is money. So every, okay, probably if you make one mistake, okay? If the whole batch is wrong, okay? Then probably uh, the losses is very severe. 
Okay, then we're going to uh okay uh okay so you can have uh train up uh engineer uh, the machinist uh to do more of other things right then shorter uh manufacturing uh lead time and then realize a continuous uh process change okay so uh that's all uh, from my side uh, so uh so any any question uh so uh, yeah I mean, hold on so any question uh from the chat maybe i'll give a, a one minute or two minutes okay you can, you can uh type in there or you can raise your hand okay once you raise your hand uh okay uh our, our site will uh, give you a space to uh ask the question uh, maybe something uh you like to know or if you after okay uh later session okay you can also uh, uh look for myself for julie or, or uh, penny okay on on any question okay you want to know regarding uh what I, we have shown i think there's a question yeah. Uh, yeah. for adaptive on taper surface is there a way to Yes. Okay. For new command, there's a uh, bottom sub already. We are able to support that. Okay. So uh, that I think uh, for the trough, trough version is already there. If I'm not mistaken, let me think just, uh, okay. But uh, the trough version is there already, but you have to turn it on manually. Uh, so I, I will say you have to turn it on manually, but because the, that one is uh, when they launch the time, right? Okay, uh, for the cat version is launched first. Uh, then the cam version, you have to uh, uh, turn it on manually. So that's why it's not, you, you won't see it on trial. So uh, for the 18 and 19 series, bottom up is, uh, is already there. Uh, don't worry, if you have any question, okay, you can uh, send the email to me or you can uh, assess our website or okay uh you can contact uh either one of our sales or marketing okay anyone of us from uh doom technology okay to ask more okay regarding okay maybe uh you've seen something this one interesting maybe you want to know more okay you can uh contact us